car again? Yeah, I was just like, yeah, I'd remember. She was a looker, which is, uh, yeah, I, w I was always wondering what she was doing with an old fart like me. <laughs> you, you would describe her as very pretty, uh, uh, dark hair, uh, green eyes, probably about 40 years old. Not a regular look. No, he didn't recognize her from uh, around here. And he, you know, he, he and Safira asked him, "Well, is she here now?" And so he sort of like looks into the room and kind of peers a little bit. And he's like, "No, I don't. I don't see anybody like this. I don't see her." No, there's no way. Yeah. But that's his story. But he's like, "Yeah, if if uh, <sighs> if there's something going on in the archive, then that's then that's the uh, that's the way in. It's under uh, it's under the it's under the stone bench out in the garden." Eltran puts his hand on his shoulders and says, I've got this friend called Lothar that once said, <laughs> good looking woman's that interested in you. <laughs> <laughs> Always, that's trouble. No, I don't know. I, 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 I think I, I find it a bit disconcerting that you, you guys, whenever I introduce a woman NPC to you guys, that you guys immediately start doing sense motive checks and you know, all this other stuff. Some, some women are just women. Yeah, that guy should have done a sense motive check. Yeah, he should have. Well, he's like, I had a few drinks. Uh, you know, I'm. Uh, it happens. <laughs> he he looks. He, he you know he smiles kind of ruefully now, and and uh, uh, you know, it, it, I mean, it sort of belies the seriousness of it. He, he you know, but he doesn't remember being being captured and taken into the dreamlands. He doesn't remember any of that stuff. But it could be that that demon was trying to. Um, I don't know, sus, maybe suss out the information. And uh, he doesn't remember it. So he, I mean, he's like, I, I don't know what I told him. I, you know, if, if this guy had control of me and was psychically destroying me, I mean, I probably was an open book. So we probably need to move now and go get this done. Yeah. Yep. This person's already went through the garden and it's already doing whatever. Somebody's been tiptoeing through my tulips. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's get him. So if we see any hot chicks in the garden or okay. in the place under the garden, then we just shoot her. Okay. Uh, that's more of a question. I'm just... Well, the garden is literally, you can look out the window. I mean, this window right here mm -hmm. looks out onto the garden that he's talking about. So it's like a little area, like over over here, there's little steps that go down. Um, and Safira's like, here, I'll, sh I'll show you, uh, you know, where the garden is. Um, Hold on a sec. Quick, quick thing here. So, All right. so she'll come over here and she basically just comes over like over to here and there's like a little set of steps that go down into this area right here. And um and that's and that's it. I mean that's I mean she's like that's a stone bench. Um John, give me a perception check. Is that a perception check? Yeah, seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, what I was thinking is, I wanted to see if anybody was looking at us while we we're doing this to see if anybody's paying attention to us. Okay, so you're facing inside the building, watching, watching the thing. Uh, not that you can tell. I mean, people are sort of, you know, when people, uh, you walked by these guys at this table and they sort of looked over, but um, it doesn't look like there's anybody. At least to your mind, it doesn't look like there's anybody sort of scoping you guys. I mean, everybody you know, sees you walk by and they're like, you know, and some of them, you know, will wave to Safira and that kind of thing, but nobody seems to be scoping you guys out. Yeah. Beltran, give me a, uh, um, a um, perception check as well. Bench, what? Give me a perception check. Perception. <laughs> Jesus Christ, 31. Okay. Hey, getting all my good rolls out now. I know. I appreciate that. Um, so as you guys, you look down at the thing, um, you look down at this garden, and it doesn't look like people use this garden very often. Um, and it's a garden in the, in the sort of English sense in that it's not like, there's not a lot of plants. It's like a little, a little sitting area. It's outside, um, you know, like that. You see the stone bench uh, that um, Brother Dunham has mentioned. And uh -huh. it's over there, and you also see that it sort of sits on top of like a little a little patch of flagstones. Uh -huh. um, and at first, it seems it seems perfectly normal and natural. But then, with your incredibly good roll, you notice that one of those flagstones seems to be sort of like like it's been pried up, and it's sort of like cocked on top of another one where it should be sort of level. Um, but it's sort of like been pried up and moved. It looks like. I don't tell anybody. It's Stone Cold who done it. Next module. Okay. Next module. 
I'm not prepared for our next module, so we're all going we're all going to bed early tonight. Uh, um, uh, go ahead and tell everybody. Okay, what? Is, uh, so, so you hear um, Beltran yell out? I think so. No, 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 not yell out. I'll probably start with people close, like, especially if John's already out there, mm -hmm. I'll probably just walk up close to him and, and kind of point that out and say, check that out. It, you see it too. Hey, there's Eric. Welcome to go. Thanks. Uh, all good? All good, all we good. Can, we can hear you. Okay, yeah. awesome. So we just started, we just got going. Um, Brother Dunamass told his story uh, and basically said, so Brother Dunamass essentially knew where the uh, Baldemir archive was. He was an initiate and, and knew Baldemir and Baldemir on his deathbed swore him to secrecy not to tell anybody. But Dunamass said, nobody really ever asked me about it. So, um, you know, I never had to tell anybody. But if you're saying that they're, uh, you know, that the attack on me and some mental domination on some of the other people is all related to some sort of demonic infestation of the temple he's a longtime cleric he's he's probably the longest serving he's not the head of the temple that's Sephira but he's the longest serving priest still still wandering around here um, so he's like look it's under the flagstone in the garden uh, is the entryway to the to the archive uh, he's just like nobody ever asked me about it so Beltran just went over there and uh, rolled a 31 perception check and sees that some of one of the flagstones is sort of like corked the wrong way. It should be level and sort of embedded in the ground, uh, but it looks like maybe somebody has already been over there. There's also some grass behind the stone bench that looks like it has been bent or broken, like something heavy has been placed on it, like somebody moved the bench. What, okay, are, the rest, what are the rest of you guys doing? Hmm. Um, let us see. I guess I'm hanging out with John Heil. I think we need to check out this archive. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. And as a lover of learning, I'm right there. Right on. Cool, cool. Yeah, I think someone else should lead, and I'll be right behind them. <laughs> <laughs> someone else should lead. Uh, <laughs> <Who's> okay. <laughs> lead, you say? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I would like to um, check it for um, a, a trap. So you're going to look under the bench. So it's kind of hard to get at it. I mean, that stone bench is right there. I mean, you could probably need to move the bench out of the way. Before he does that, I, I feel a song coming on. And so I feel a song coming on. Okay, what Wonderful. are you, what, song. what song do you feel coming on? Um, hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work, we go. <laughs> confidence, inspire confidence. Okay, inspiring confidence with the hi-ho song. All right, all right. Thank you. I, I, I feel a lot more confident. Excellent, excellent. Did you hear this coming out of... Uh, coming, coming, coming out of uh, uh, Phineas's salute. That's excellent, excellent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and Excellent people inside too. the inside the bar start uh, start singing along and you know that kind of thing. Um, um, where is this um, bench? I'm sorry. So the bench is. Oh, you're in the round room with Brother Dunamass. Yeah. So uh, uh, you the gotcha. bench is. You see where those guys are? So it's right I in. Do. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So um, it's me, Phineas, Beltran, and John Heil. Right, and I assume Lama, you and Bjorn are going to join them once they've moved the bench and taken care yeah. of business. Yeah. Okay. Um, is um, Bjorn here? Dad? Uh, no, he's here. Oh, uh, he went here. into the other room for, for a while, though. Uh, I think gotcha. he's stocking up on ale. Excellent. For... Excellent. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. No, I'm cool. still trying to find. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I lost myself too. Someone moved me. Thank you. Gotcha. There we go. Okay. Uh, All right. Now uh, I'm on the bench. Gotcha. So uh, if somebody muscular can move the bench, then Fiat, go ahead and give me uh, a, um, a trap check roll. Per yes, uh, sir. Perception. Uh, perception? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, perception is going to be plus uh, 16. So let's okay. see. Do, 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 do. Um, hang on. Do, do, do. I need an assist. Anyone? Uh, okay, so Lama restrains and moves the bench out of the way, and you, 21, you, 
you look at the flagstones, and it does look like it has been recently moved. It's a, you know how flagstones are? Shit gets in the middle in between them, like dirt and soil and stuff like that, and moss. It looks like that has been dug out, and one of the flagstones has been moved and then replaced sort of poorly. Potentially replaced poorly from underneath. I see. Um, any sign of a trap? A no sign of traps that you can see. All right. Uh, well, um, I mean, if we're lifting the, the, the lid off a um, c collapsing pit trap, I'm going to be bummed out. But, <laughs> okay. Uh, great. Uh, can, can I lift up the flagstone? Uh, yeah, you should have no problem. Okay, cool. Uh, I do that. Uh, um, and who is um, watching this? I, I mean, are the, are the people inside this bar or temple watching us or uh well not in not, i mean other, I, I, other than maybe some idle curiosity they are okay. uh okay. um but nobody seems it's like uh like i told john Heil earlier uh, nobody seems to be paying uh, a great deal of attention to you guys it's more like what are those guys doing i don't know get, get, order another round you know that kind of thing okay. um so it doesn't they don't seem to be um you don't see any people that seem to be like expressly interested in that's and you guys it, okay. are sort of downstairs and outside, so it's kind of hard for people still inside to see you guys. Got it. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I moved the flagstone. Um, how large is the uh, uh, opening? Uh, it's actually quite small, but when you push aside the flagstone, you do see that there is what looks to be like a little, maybe um, two and a half to three feet in, in diameter, cylinder uh with a with a ladder attached to the side like a a metal ladder uh sort of like going uh, uh down into, and it goes down about probably 15 feet and there's a small landing there uh where it okay. goes somewhere else i see i see um does the air smell fresh or fetid and stale give me a perception check that's okay. a great question it smells a little stale but there's also something else, uh, and you're not sure what it is. And you stand over it, and you're like getting there, and and you you doing. And hobbits have pretty good senses of smell too. So I'm yeah. you smell it. It's at first you think it's just a part of the musty smell, uh, that kind of thing, like an earthy smell. But below it, you smell it smells a little bit like smoke, Maybe. like a hot. Like a hot brunette? Uh, more like sm smoke. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's very faint, but it's, a, it's like a smoky smell. Okay. Thank you. Um, and do I hear it, 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 anything? Uh, no, you don't hear oh. anything. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, um, um, if it's okay with you guys, uh, I will venture down this ladder and check out the situation. Go ahead. We're right behind you. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> right behind you the whole way. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. Um, I will do Yeah, that. Why, don't you, why don't you let me go first, actually? Okay. I, I can take a little more damage than you. I don't know. I'm well, sticking you uh, in the front, unless okay. you want to try to stealth it. Well, I was thinking um, I would just uh, creep down and use my dark vision and just scope out the situation and also see if I saw any traps or smelled or heard. It, 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 anything um i'm i'm at um 40 hit points i think i could i'll be fine okay we'll give a yell if you need help i will i will call, i will give it my hobbit holler uh all right so i um i'm gonna scapper down that um ladder okay yeah i mean the ladder seems to be in good condition a little old a little uh you know the metal's cold and that kind of stuff but um it doesn't seem to be at all ruined or rusty or anything like that. You get to the bottom um, and you um, kind of look around. At first, you're looking around with dark vision uh, and you can see what looks to be, there's the, the, the landing you're on is probably a, a five foot by five foot kind of area, um, t probably 10 foot by 10 foot, but um, you can see off uh, over it's sort of on the opposite side from the ladder. So you come down the ladder and then you turn 180 degrees and you can see that there is a set of stairs going further into the earth. Okay, cool. Weirder um, even than that is that you detect some light coming up those stairs. Not a lot, 
but some. Okay. Um, can, can I just check around this landing for traps? I mean, sure. not, the, not that I'm paranoid, but I'm <laughs> pa 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 paranoid. So yep. uh, real fast, I'm going to just uh, check that um, again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, three. <sighs> well, okay. So three. Well, three well so I'm sorry. He gets plus three with Inspire Confidence. Oh, yeah, that's oh, right. right. Uh, you can Thank still... You. Thank you. So, 22. Thank you. All right. Yeah. All, right, cool. All right. It's inspiring competence, uh, especially yeah. if you were to mine. Um, but um, so plus three, that's 23 or 22. Uh, you do not see any traps uh, right. on the um, on the patio. Uh, but give me a survival check. Survival oh, check. shit. All right. Um, survival check. Jeez. Mm. Uh, oh, um, probably for tracking there. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plus two. Uh, let me see, and plus three for my um, for the song for the confident yeah. song. Yeah. Thank you. So mm -hmm. D twenty plus rolling the dice now. It's being real slow at eight. Geez, these rolls. My rolls so far five six three three. All right, so eleven. Uh, yeah, I mean you don't you don't see any people. All you see is a little bit of light. Okay. Uh, very faint light coming up the stairs. Okay. But there doesn't seem to be any traps here. All right. Can I do okay. a knowledge check? On? On this whole, this archive, this thing we're going into. The Baltimore's archive? Sure. Uh, knowledge history, probably. All right. Let me add in my bonus. Bam. Okay. So, uh, and you give yourself the current, uh, the competence of your own convictions. Yes. Uh, so for a 25. So yeah, you would remember, and they actually, t uh, they told you this back at Master Bashir's is basically this guy, uh, was a cleric of Caden Kalian and an expert demonologist. And his name was Baldemir Trude. Uh, he guided all of his research. Uh, he did research here at the temple, apparently, um, to, you know, how, how to fight demons and, and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, uh, he built a laboratory, compiled an extensive archive reportedly, um, but nobody, uh, you know, he died a couple of decades ago and nobody ever saw his, um, saw his archives. Nobody knew what had happened to him. Um, what the, uh, the guy from the triumvirate, this Osprey guy says, he's like, most people don't know this, but the Pathfinder Society was funding uh, a fair amount of this research. The temple of Caden Kalian is not what you would call a, a deity that does a lot of wealth accumulation. Um, it's uh, it's more of wealth oh. dispensation. <laughs> um, but uh, but so uh, this guy Trude, uh, as a Caden Kalianist, um, you know, basically had no very little money to sort of conduct research. So the so the society sort of gave him a fair amount of money, and that's why when Osprey Osprey has an interest in this, because he wants access to that. To, to that archive because um, you know they feel like they, they have a, an ownership stake in it because they funded it. But nobody ever bothered to ask Brother Dunham asked because the Pathfinder said because Baldemir never told the Pathfinder Society that he was working with a couple of guys and so the society never knew to even ask him where the, the archive is. Interesting. So that's what Phineas, Phineas will tell you, not so much about that the Pathfinder Society forgot to ask him, but the sort of history of this bald American guy. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Interesting. Can I tell you just that? Okay. Um, I, can I call up to my colleagues? Um, looks all clear here. There's a landing here, and there's a staircase going further down. There's a light at the end of it. Um, and, uh, yeah. And do you guys follow him down? Yep. Oh. Yeah, at, the, at this right. point, do you guys want me to go in front? Now it's time for map switch! <laughs> right on. Uh, I think before going, heading that way, I want to, uh, I want to do something. I want to open up a communication with well that's what i'm trying to find 
Okay. This is what happens when you play. Uh, Are we supposed to see a room way across the way? <laughs> no, it's got a big old room showing right there. Oh, it's message with message. What room? <laughs> what room? What are you talking about? <laughs> Stop looking at those rooms. Um, we go straight to that room. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no way to go straight there. You have to go through all the elaborately constructed traps and pitfalls that I've put in front of you. <laughs> all right, so uh, there you guys are. You guys find yourselves uh, sort of squeezing down uh, uh, into this 10 by 10 area. Um, and I'd be, Bjorn, are you gonna, are you gonna take point? Uh, I can, unless John Heil wanted to, to try stealth or something along those lines first. I mean, I, I think if we open that hatch, somebody's gonna know we're here anyway, really honestly. So. Well, I mean, I can, like I said, I can take point. And even if I do stealth, you, you 10 feet behind me walking is gonna pretty much ruin that, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Who needs stealth? Who needs stealth? When you have a big old says a thief. Metal man in front of you. Yeah, when you have brute force. <laughs> Alright, so who's in front? I'll go in front. Cool. Alright, Bjorn, give me a perception check real quick. And those of you, uh, the rest of you can be either perception or survival. Holy crap. Nat 20. Nat 20 perception. So, um, I don't know if Fiat told you about the smell, but that, that smoky smell uh -huh. is, uh, is stronger. You get, a, you get a good whiff of it, but you also notice that it's not, it's not like wood smoke, like the smell of a campfire. It's more like a chemical fire or something like that. It's, it's, it's smoke, it's burnt, but it also has sort of an underlying, I don't know, the first thing that comes to your mind is like sulfur. Like there's a little sulfurous smell as a part of it. I'm high on that, too. You say that already? John Heil did that too. So is that uh, survival? Uh, no, it was uh, perception. Okay. You, uh, Bjorn mentions you smell that, you smell smoke, and, and Heil, you definitely smell it. Um, somebody give me a survival check. It could be anybody. Whoever's got the best survival check. I don't. That's not me. 24 is good enough. Um, so, John, as you're talking with Bjorn about the about the smell, and you see uh, Fiat sort of begin to edge his way down there, um, you know, sort of peeking around, uh, you look down and you see, though, though your footprints are, are beginning to, uh, the group's footprints are beginning to occlude uh, a lot of the, a lot of the footprints, you do see what look to be a couple of footprints, and it looks like it was made by a high-heeled shoe. Interesting. Certainly a poor fashion choice. Everybody goes, in the, everybody goes in the dungeons with their high heels on. <laughs> I lost all that. When you said that, I go ahead and take mine off. <laughs> Unless my computer totally dumped when you started talking to me. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm so, so you're looking around, you could see that uh, uh, several, there, that, that the group that you're with is, you know, sort of stomping around and, and, and sort of stomping out footprints, but you do spot a couple of footprints that look to be made of a high, from high heeled shoes, like something a woman would wear. And they're, and they're heading down the stairs. Okay, so probably the chick that uh, kissed the priest. Hmm. Yep. And the smell of sulfur might indicate that, that she's a demon. Yeah. She might be who we're looking for. Or was she but, just. Are we shooting her on sight, or are we? Well, unless I, you want to kiss her, I mean. I shoot what? everybody <laughs> on sight. I shoot everybody. Is that not page? Is that not right? Pretty much. <laughs> Beltran's not bloodthirsty, but he's extremely practical to almost offensive proportions. If she did this, he's pretty much assuming that we're coming down here to end her. Is there a reason we need to talk to her or find out anything else? Lana's going to wonder out loud if her shoes will fit her. Ah, are they ruby red slippers? We will make a valiant effort. I was going to say, I think at this point, we've pretty much ascertained that this is a bad, a bad guy. So I don't, I don't really know why there would be a need for a bunch of conversation. Okay. Um, all right. All right. Fair enough. 
I was uh, first into the mix. Uh, well, uh, um, hmm. I have your... yeah, me. All right. Cold iron sword and shield out. Okay. Um. Uh, Bjorn is my good friend. Can I, can I go be behind him? Sure. And um, uh, you know, I kind of want to. I'm just careful about traps, but um, it we, if we come to um, you know a stone floor or um, tiles or. Well, the steps going down are made of stone. Uh, so the only thing the only thing that was made entirely of metal was essentially the tube that you guys came down in and the ladder within it. Once you got to the once you got to the to the, I want to say patio, but it's not a patio. Um, the, the landing um, that was made of stone, carved stone, and the stairs going downward are also are also made of stone. Got it. Okay. You figured that. Um, you're probably 15 to 18 feet underground right now, and the step, the stone, the stairs go downward. I see. So, I'm I'm familiar with uh, with Fiat, and he seems to be dithering at this point, or tittering, whatever the right word is. Do you want to go first and check for traps? I do actually. That's what I thought. <laughs> I just wanna, can, can, can I just? Um, he's rubbing his hands together and he's all nervous looking. Go for it, dude. You know, I, mean, <laughs> you know, I had a rough life. I'm, I'm naturally uptight, anxious. I just want to use my hands and eyes and ears and check for some traps because that's you know what I do. Okay, so can I just move here, uh, move down to here, and can I look? around for for traps as i go sure give me a uh perception check okay. is um um our noble bard still um uh s s s singing yes and i've also cast message so you can relay anything to me that i can pass to the group all right so all right so um, message message between fiat and phineas no okay. message between me and the whole group okay uh okay um 24 all right, so you're coming around there, uh, and you start to see more of that light coming around this corner here. Okay. Um, there, the 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 burnt smell is stronger, although okay. it's not. I mean, it's still there. It's not, um, you know, uh, uh, it's not overwhelming, uh, okay. but it's definitely it's definitely present. Okay, can I uh, um, do stealth and creep around this corner? Uh, sure. Uh, so let me see. My stealth is going to be uh, um, 18 uh, plus 18 plus 3. So that's going to be plus 21. Uh, let me see here. And boom. 37. Okay. So can I go here? Oh, I see. I see. Um, I Okay. So uh, before you get there, however, uh -oh. uh, you need to make a, uh, um, I need you to make a quick uh, acrobatics check. Sure. That's what I do best. Um, acrobatics. <laughs> uh, 16 plus three. Let me see. Do, 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 do. Oops. Pulled the wrong way. Okay. 36. Okay. So as you're sort of coming right about like right about here, um, you you feel yourself start to slip. You're looking you're looking forward and um, you know the light. Hold on a second. The light opens up. You it, so and you sort of, you start to slip. Uh, and you're like whoa, 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 and you hold your balance, but you look down and you can see the floor is covered with blood. Uh, as you get to that corner there, you see what looks to be uh, the uh, originator of that blood. Uh, and you also f see on one of the steps, laid very neatly next to each other, are four fingers. Just sitting there on the step. Four fingers? Mm-hmm. Jesus. All right. <laughs> um, I relayed this all to my colleagues. Um, Four fingers, huh? Four fingers. God, it's not three fingers. <laughs> Four yeah. fingers. Okay. He'll, he'll never do the Boy Scout handshake again. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> or the Vulcan salute. So, um, it, there's a um, corpse there. 
Yeah, there's a guy laying on the stairs. Uh, he looks um, pretty beat up. He also looks quite dead. Uh, and there's a fair amount of blood uh, all up and down the stairs. Um, okay. And plus those fingers. Now, you're not sure if the fingers belong to this guy, but he's the only corpse in the neighborhood. So, Can I see his hands? Uh, yeah, give me a perception check. Got it, Jennifer. Give me a perception. Uh, Thirty perception from uh, Leah, uh, Fiat. Uh, you see, you do, you can see his hands, and you do see that on one of his hands, his left hand, uh, there are four fingers removed. They look like they were chopped off. Chopped off. Guys, did you get my message? I did. Yeah, give me a perception check when you have a moment. Uh, so yeah, so you tell, I'm sure, I'm assuming you tell Bjorn that uh, and warn him about the slippery blood patch yeah, on, the, um, uh, on, the, on, the, on the stairs. Watch out for the blood uh, and, uh, and, and you see. Okay. Um, how long has this, this fellow been dead? Uh, not too, uh, not too long. Um, okay. You would, do you go over to him and sort of kneel down and sort of like yes, I do. check yeah. him? Yeah. Uh, give, me, give me a heel check. A heel check. Okay. Coming up, uh, heel is going to be... While he's, while he's putting that together, what are the rest of you doing? Lamb, I know what you're doing. Phineas, I, I'm assuming you're just cranking away at high ho uh, and making things. What about John and Beltran? 15? You're, no, yeah, you're not a uh, doctor, uh, but... Um, he looks reasonably fresh. There's no smell of decomp yet. Uh, he hasn't, um, you know, um, you know, you don't, you're not starting to see the sort of the sunken aspect of, of bodies in sort of that weak, okay. weak area. So you would say probably on the line of two or three days. Okay, three days. Um, okay, um, so his fingers were chopped off by a blade or by teeth or. In your opinion, probably an axe, but you're not sure. Okay, and so it doesn't look like it was like I don't you don't think it was a knife. Okay, I'm I'm gonna assume he was holding something, um, and and as he was holding it, his uh, uh, the fingers got sliced off, or else he had a really bad accident, dicing chives or something. Well, know. you the, the other thing that you notice, madam, uh, other than the four fingers missing and the fact that he is quite dead, mm -hmm. is that he has a tied to his belt. He's very modestly dressed, but tied to his belt is a small wooden beer mug looking thing, and it's just tied to his belt like a charm. Okay, um, can I, uh, um, hey, can can, sorry. That's a Caden Kellyan. That's a Caden's brother. Oh, got it, got it. All right. Um, interesting. C can I um, carefully search the c corpse? Uh, sure. Okay, and I just find this um, wooden mug. Uh, yeah, just a wooden mug. Uh, he doesn't have any other personal items on him. Uh, okay. You do uh, as you flip him over. It does look like you think you found the uh, the manner of death. You don't think it was the fingers that killed him because it looks like his windpipe has been crushed, like he's been Oof. wrangled. Oof. And that you, but you only see that when you flip him over. Got it. All right. Cool. Um, and uh, what's this glowing thing here? It's a lantern <laughs> sitting it. in the middle of the floor. Interesting. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I will move there, and um, I, I want to let my colleagues um, – come down to and um what's is, is there more um is there a door or there is there's a, a set of double doors uh right across oh, from the lantern I, the I lit it. lantern okay um they I'm are gonna, closed gotcha. and uh are, the doors themselves are covered with um you know strange sort of runes and seals oh okay interesting uh okay we're just gonna open that right up real quick yeah, so there's sort of like some shallow alcoves that flank the door, Got it. Uh, and each one of these alcoves right here has a big statue of Caden Kalian. Okay. Um, hold one holding a massive flag, and the other hoisting a sack. Um, okay. uh, one of the statues is broken, uh, and one of it, it and its arm is sort of like laying on the on the ground. Okay. All right. Um, I, 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 colleagues, do any of any of you have knowledge, skill, or 
arcade yes. skill to yes. check this door. Uh, Knowledge. I will stand aside and let my colleagues um, check out the door. Okay. Uh, do you want me to? Yeah, what are you, um, what, I mean, what are you specifically looking to figure out? We have to do acrobatics to get down these stairs, Gus. After you point, after the point out, no, you don't have to. After after they point out the blood uh, pooled on the on the thing, it's it's easy enough to avoid. It's a, it's just if you're not looking for it, it's easy. It's not easy to spot if you're just walking down down the stairs. But you can you can leap over it, and I'm assuming that you don't just go stomping around in this guy's blood. If at all, I slid down on my butt for fun. <laughs> I was say, Llama does that all the time. <laughs> Llama is covered again in blood. Can you hear me better? Yeah, hear you fine. Yes. yes. So what are you trying to figure out, Andrew, um, you know, about these doors? So you go over there and check it out, um, you know, come down the, uh, the stairs. Yeah, so just trying to figure out if I recognize any of the ruins or if those are seals I may have seen in San Francisco if, or if they're more northern, like harp seals. <laughs> what kind of damn seals are these? It's the seal of it's the Caden Kalian seal of approval. Or, or, or. Oh, well, we um, all seek approval. No, it's uh, so give me a knowledge arcana. Okay. I did a knowledge history less if that applies at all. Okay. 15. Okay. Let me. I'm still learning these scripts. Uh. <laughs> That's not right. That's not right. I think oh, he exactly. made that check. Yeah, you got a D20 plus 179. Well, that sounds about right. <laughs> you're good. Awesome. you're good, but you're not that good. Okay, let me... Uh, all right. What's it supposed to be? Plus 17. Plus 17. All right, so you rolled a three. Uh, so that would be a 20. Um, I mean, I mean, you're not sure what they mean. Uh, there's a, some some of it is written in common, frankly. It is like you know, none none but the followers of Caden Kalian shall pass the sacred place, you know that kind of thing. And some of it is written in other languages. Some of it's just symbols. Um, so, and I mean, you don't. I mean, you're not really sure. But some of the ones that are written in in other languages and symbols seem to be relatively recent especially one patch that sort of, it's a set of double doors that push inward and there's a patch, maybe it, it's not very big. It's like this big around and it's kind of high up on the door. The doors themselves are about eight feet tall and it's kind of high up and you can see it there and it looks new, but you're not sure of the language. It's hard to see. So I, do I recognize the language? Does it look uh, what, what, uh, what languages do you speak? I speak, well, I can cast a spell and speak anything I want. Um, what do you speak, I speak? Off the, Yeah, off the top of your head, what do you speak? Abyssal, Celestial, Common, Draconic, Dwarven, Elven, Goblin, Infernal, Varician. Wow, okay, uh, that's a nice. pretty good list. So you recognize at least some of the characters look like Archaic Abyssal. Hmm. Archaic abyssal. Jesus. Where did we see that before? It seems like we came across that in our last go around. Seems like that we see that everywhere we go. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Hmm. So I can't read them. I just recognize them. Well, yeah, I mean, you recognize them. I mean, they're, it's, from what you can see, it doesn't look like maybe it's. Uh, it's it's specific words. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to see. Archaic abyssal is hard to read anyway. Um, you're not sure if it's like words or a series of of letters. The weird thing about this is this writing is like split in half by the door. So like half of it is on one side of the door and half of it's on the other. This new lesser looks like it's been here for a long time. It looks newer. So this is a. It doesn't have the same sort of age and patina of age that a lot of the runes have on it. It looks okay. like it was done recently. So it's a trap, Eric. Try to. May I no. check uh, for a trap? Um, yep. And if if um. You're gonna need is, a boost. You're gonna need a boost, though. Uh, <laughs> sure. You know what? Yeah. Uh, uh, um, 
I'm a short guy, but I have tall friends. Um, Bjorn, pick me up! Yes, please. Um, Bjorn, if you have time, um, can you um, lift me up and I, I will search for um, traps. If you don't have time, I joke, then you know, we'll just wait until you do, Bjorn. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll boost him up and hold him to where he needs to be. Okay. Thanks, buddy. All right. All right. Thank so you. let's and let's get that um, let's get that trap check. Perception uh, thirty six. Ooh, yeah, it's a trap and a bad one. Um, your knowledge of magical traps has expanded greatly over the over the past several months, okay. and in this particular thing, this is an abyssal rune. Anything pushing those doors open is going to trigger the rune. Now you're not sure what it does. You don't speak. You don't read abyssal, do you? I. Probably not. Uh, um, no. That's not something that, that is like a, a big class at Hobbit University. Right. Um, <laughs> so you don't, you can't read the words, but it's definitely, it, I mean, it's definitely something that you push these doors open, that, that thing, you, could, you break that connection between those two halves okay. and something bad happens. Okay. Well, uh, I relay this to my colleagues and um, can I, yeah. I'm gonna try to try to disable it. I could try. I, I don't really know if my humble um, uh, thieves tools are gonna disarm a demonic trap. Yeah, rogues can disarm sure traps. Really? Okay. Yep. Uh, wow. I did, did. That's good to know. Um, so, is it this a sleight of hand check or a? Um, it's actually there's a skill called disable device. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, so it's. I What's your skill at that? I can Sorry. assist you with that. I got a 12. Okay. Well, um, my uh, bonus is 18. And okay. What do I, I add to that? Uh, you got to roll d20. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm going to try to assist. Yeah. Okay. Do you like my idea? <laughs> okay. So you add another plus two on that. So would you say okay. your bonus was 18? So now yes. it's plus 20. Okay. I, th and, I think and, Llama's got a good idea. What's, What's that? Now she said, well, let's grab the dead guy and toss him through from the stairs through the door. Uh, we, it's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a significantly orcish way of thinking. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, well, I got a, a total of plus 23 bonus. Um, can I... Well, you do know, as you've been studying magical traps, that if you roll and fail, yeah. the trap goes off basically in your face. Whereas the dead guy can take the brunt and you guys can stand behind us. Well, well it's got to open the door. I mean, a dead guy hitting the door is not going to open it. We just have to break the seal and have the trap go off. We just Mom's have to like, no, I can throw him really hard. She's like, I was going to say, it depends on how hard we fling him. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm game to watch anyway. It sounds like fun. <laughs> okay. Um, here's my c c concern. If we set off this trap, we don't know what it does. If it's a, I don't know, a poison gas or um, I know maybe it's not it bad. opens a rift to the abyss, you know, who knows? <laughs> That's adventuring. Come on now. Yeah. Okay. You, I'm um, kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just playing. <laughs> we do. If you want to do this, I'm going to step back. <laughs> I mean, he's not going to be that heavy. He's missing four fingers already. True. Come on, True. Come on, Fiat. You're not stepping anywhere. I'm holding you up. All right. Um, <laughs> do you all want me to disarm this trap? Hell yeah. Yeah. All right. I stand up around the corner, though. Okay. Here. <laughs> I'm okay. going to back off. <laughs> here it goes. Everybody's Ready? backing off. Great. All right. All right. Who's going to stay in the room and or in there, and who's going to move back? I see uh, everybody. I got to hide behind. Oh. <laughs> I, I'll get on my shoulders. I was to say, at this point, everybody should move back. Everybody I have no be back out of the room except for Bjorn holding them up. Yeah, you know, I have right? no choice because I'm Plus, the one holding them up. Them. Okay. If I help them, do um, I have oh, yeah, if you're, help, if you're helping, though, you have to be in there. Yep. All right. Um, Bjorn... You can if you want, but you're in the room. Okay. Bjorn, hold, hold the steady. Here, here, here it goes. And uh, we'll, uh, your butt. Oh, look at that! Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. So you, you guys wow. see, uh, you guys see uh, Fiat. He examines the trap. He has one of his little sleep thieves tools, and finally he reaches deep into uh, into his, uh, his his tool pouch and pulls out a single stick of juicy fruit gum. <laughs> 
<laughs> he opens the juicy fruit. He pops it open, pops the gum in his mouth, and takes a little bit of foil and folds it into a thing. So it's foil on both sides and slips it in between the two things and says to Bjorn, now it thinks it's still closed. And he gently <laughs> pushes the door open. And it goes, and it opens. And he, he takes the gum and he sticks it onto the door and he sticks the aluminum foil there and it stays there and the door opens. I love it. Whew. Okay. Dang. Dang. Yeah. Never had a doubt, little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. The rest of us call from on the corner. Neither did we. <laughs> so I can step through? Yep. Right. <laughs> What is this All thing right. in front of me? All right, so that uh, I will tell you. Uh, so basically what you do is you're stepping into what looks to be a substantive library. It's a series of, uh, there's, there's various, connect, it's a, it looks like a big room. There's, um, what you're standing next to is what you would call a stone-topped reading island, uh, which is sort of a thing. There are books on top of it. Uh, tall shelves line the walls. Um, uh, in, in, there's a lot of dust and cobwebs, but you can see uh, that uh, in many cases, the cobwebs have been sort of pushed down or torn off. And there's the uh, obvious um, sign of what uh, several large creatures have been down here fairly recently disturbing the, uh, mm. disturbing the dust. Um, the shelves are filled with what look to be uh, of various kinds of books and, and tomes. Um, some of them look like they have been recently damaged. Uh, there's a couple of shelves are smashed, uh, some singed maybe with fire. Um, there are some books uh, lying in, in piles. Some of them are torn. Um, there is a, um, what you're standing at is one of those stone topped uh, areas that have, um, you know, books and, and things on them. Interesting. The stone topped area doesn't look like it has been disturbed recently, but there's a lot of indication that some fairly large creatures have moved through here uh, and some damage to the books okay. and the shelves. Right. Which looks um, to be recent. Okay. Can I just uh, scan through the, through the books? Does it, anything look like a good read? Uh, well, they look to be fairly esoteric tomes about demonology, you know, so you see titles like, uh, you know, um, Creatures yeah, of the Sixth. 101. Yeah, well, not so much 101, more like graduate school. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of thing on the on, on the substance of daemons and their interaction with, with uh, you know, the residents of, of the um, 472nd level of the abyss, um, cre creatures of the abyssal crevices, you know, that kind of stuff. There's a, it's a lot, it's pretty esoteric. And if you even pull one off the shelf and sort of flip through it, very scholarly, very esoteric. You look at a couple of them, uh, a lot of them have authors, but there are a couple that don't have obvious authors. And when you look at a couple of those, and there's a, a similar book laying on that table, they all seem to be in a single kind of handwriting, um, the ones that don't have authors. And they're all sort of bound in various kinds of things, strung together. Um, it could be the actual notes of Baldemir uh, in those books. Now they are they are much fewer than the the other books, but um, they do seem to be in the same hand. So Heil, as you go uh, sort of through, uh, there, you notice that there is an area of darkness, darker than the lantern light, that down to the south of um, your area, down in the southern end of those libraries. It just seems like it's much darker down there. Hey, I'm going to point to everybody and kind of do a. Do you say anything? Nope. I'm do um, some battle talk. Can Fiat step? Wait a minute. Hmm. Um, can I message to John Heil? Are you seeing something to the south? Okay. Uh, yeah, you guys have message spell going. So, so I mean, you can you can message each other. What do you? I mean, John, what do you what do you tell them? 
I'm, I'm basically just going to point and say this is where we need to go if there's something down here. So you see down there, you see, t it looks like just, at first it's just like swirling darkness. And then you see two pinpoint red eyes looking uh -oh. at you. Okay, I'm going to point down the other hallway because it looks like the one hallway goes down so we can go from one side and then go from the other side. So I'm going to look at Heil or at uh, Bjorn and Lama and say, you know, one follow me and one go that way. Okay. Go way. All right. So I will go this way. Shield and cold iron sword. Okay. I guess Jennifer's doing something. She might want to just work on a laundry or something, but she can follow me, I guess. I'm going to stick close to B Bjorn. Okay. What about uh, uh, Phineas? What about you? I, ooh, um, I am going to move here and cast. What am I going to cast? I am going to cast Exquisite Accompaniment, and I'm going to put a quarter in the jukebox and have it play Inspire Courage. Okay. What does Exquisite Accompaniment do, specifically? It creates an instrument uh, to play what I tell it to um, so that I can be free to do other things. It oh, okay. Me. It follows along. That's cool. Nice. I mean, it follows me. It doesn't follow along because I'm I'm relinquishing the playing to this little magical floaty loop thing. He's got a boombox. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I'm like. A... <clears throat> All right. So, how does Lama get there? Does she actually go past you, John, and, and begin to approach the creature? You're muted, Jennifer. If you're moving, yeah, I didn't do that. So. Um. Well, no. If I was to draw a direct path, it would have. Can you see me when I'm moving it? Uh, sort of. Okay, so my intent was to cross the hall, and then slide in here. Okay, so to do that, you have to approach the creature, right? You would pass um, John up and up in the gap in between the. Uh, I guess from here to here. Okay, so you're going sort of that way around. So yeah, and then I'm going, and then I'm just walking all the way around this way. Okay, you don't get that far because at that moment you so so as you pass John Howe, you're looking to the south, and you see and John's like it's right yeah, there. It's already you looking at us. See this this creature sort of like you see these little eyes looking right at you. They're like very small, like bright red eyes that are that are looking at you. And so as you sort of like move toward it, you see those eyes begin to grow much larger. <laughs> uh -oh. And it attacks. Roll for a niche. Oh, jeez. Okay. Phew. Initiative. Um. I'm sorry. It, initiative is just the um pl plus five for or uh, the dexterity. Uh, yes, yes. You, your dex bonus. Unless you have improved initiative as a feat. I, I don't. And, and uh, um, is um, Phineas still playing? Uh, yes, he's, so he's got a, he, so how would you describe this, Andrew? Your lute is sort of like floating in air and playing the song and singing while you kind of do other things? Yeah, it basically takes the place of my bardic performance. Got it. Okay. Ah, oh, geez, that sucks. A two. That's terrible. Um, ten. To total of ten. Okay. That that's terrible. You got a ten with two. I'm jealous. <laughs> well, uh, uh, my dex is twenty. A little better than mine. Uh, Lama, what did you get? You got eleven point oh one. And then, do I have everybody? One, two, three. Who am I missing? Oh, I think I need. Phineas. To... Yeah, you need to roll initiative too. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Uh... Well, let's see what happens here. Okay. 
25.03. Okay. Where, 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 where? Did you get in there? He's in there. All right, let me roll him up. And uh, it's going to get a quick attack on Llama and then finish your up. So uh, sadly, it has pounce, which means it can rush forward and still do its all uh, its uh, full attack, which it does. Um, so it is going to roll. It's it's got it's black and made of like shadow, and its claws and and it, it reaches it hits Llama with both claws. Well, it doesn't hit, but we don't know yet. Uh, it gets but a claw claw bites at her to see if it can hit. So first claw, second claw, and the bite. So does that second claw hit you? At a 25? Yes, sir. It does, all right. So um, the something disconcerting happens. You yeah. feel the claw go through you. So it does, um, it does, um, D6 of physical damage, but it passes, or so it does two points of physical damage as it passes through you. But even more disconcerting is the sense of coldness as its claws pass through your flesh and come out the other side. Um, it doesn't, uh, you, you feel like you, you feel wounds open up and then immediately start to freeze. And it does another two points of cold damage. So two of physical, two cold in those two hits. But the worst part is you 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 feel like the claw went completely surpassed completely through your flesh. Wow, oh, Jesus, Vinius, what do you do? So you are rocking and rolling back there, competent, inspiring, courage or competence? Courage, courage. Okay. And I am going to look at this foul thing, and I'm going to. You can't see it. So, so the book the bookcase is in the way. See these middle that middle thing. Oh, jeez. Is a bookcase. Well, that's okay. I don't need to see it. Oh, Cut. really? <laughs> I'm going to cast and cast blistering invective. Blistering invective. Okay. Wow. An insulting tirade, so vicious and spiteful. <laughs> Enemies who hear it are physically scorched by your fury. Okay. Wow. Awesome. Enemies <laughs> who hear it. All right. Cool. Yeah, you don't. So that is, I get a reflex save. Is that what that does? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and it's um, and it's fire. Okay. Fire. Cool. Uh, fire. Uh, all right. Replace Sean for cool spells, man. <laughs> all right. All right. He's cussing uh, out this thing, basically. <laughs> yeah, he's basically you piece of demonic crap. I am. <laughs> I am done with this. You are a big poop. Nineteen. Is that the save? What's your saving? Uh, let's see. Enemies that are demoralized. Um, What's your saving throw? It should be on your sheet. If you spell save. Yes, yeah, spell. Make an intimidate check. What's the level of the spell? It is a. Um, uh, I guess uh, third level. Level spell. Okay. What's your. I assume charisma is your casting set. What's your charisma bonus? Uh, 20. So that's five. So DC is, as far as I can tell, is 18. Okay, so he passed the DC. Um, uh, go ahead and roll the D10 fire damage. Okay. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt his elderberries. <laughs> oh, but wait. It has spell resistance. Sorry. So uh, roll first. Before we roll damage, let's roll a D20 and your caster level. To see okay. if you beat its spell resistance. All right. It's not easy. So I can't ins add Inspire Courage bonus? Just D20 plus caster level? Yeah, that doesn't, Inspire Courage doesn't work there. So, okay. Well, thing it does work is you have the feat spell penetration. 17. 17 is going to be just enough to get past the spell resistance. So the spell works, and go ahead and roll d10 fire damage. Okay. Let me see if there's, whoops. Uh, okay. 
Unless, you know, Iria, you know, Les, Libby's character from the BDC Black Dogs campaign? Yep. This, this firebox, she uses that spell. That's pretty nasty. The blistering invective one? Mm -hmm. All right, so eight points of fire damage. I'm going to go ahead and, and minus that damage off. There you go. So you guys here, Phineas, come up with some really good insults for this creature. He seems, and it, there's like smoke coming out of like Phineas's mouth when he says it. Um, <laughs> and uh, you hear, you see the creature kind of like look around and he looks kind of like looks at you, John, uh, but he knows that Phineas is there. Uh, and, uh, but he seems remarkably unaffected. Hmm. Phineas just went full Karen. Mm -hmm. On a customer Bjorn, service agent. Bjorn, you're up. Oh, Phineas, are you going to move? Um, no. Okay. All right, Bjorn, you just come rocking around there from up from behind it? Yeah, double move, which means I can't attack. Okay. But I'm going to go into a defensive stance and act as uh, which McCall for Lama. Flank? Yeah, that's it. Okay. So you're just going to stand there and be like, and you see those, those pinprick eyes kind of look around and, uh, you know, it's almost, it's almost like the smoke is smiling when it sees you. So, okay, so you're just going to stay right there. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically that was a double move, so I can't attack. Gotcha, okay, okay. I'm just providing flank for Lama. All right, uh, so it is going to, so it's... In this round. Yep, it's, the, it's this turn, so it is going to... So it is going to do a couple of things. It is going to try and bite Llama. Uh, and then also, at will, it is going to uh, emanate fear at you guys as well. And that would affect uh, Llama and Bjorn um, as per the spell. But it is not a spell. It is a spell-like ability. So he can, he can do it at the same time. But that's going to be his two actions. So... Um, I need will saves from both Bjorn and Lama, and it's going to try and bite Lama at the same time. Plus, that's plus two. Uh, okay, eight. Not and didn't this thing already attack? It got the jump on Lama. It charged Lama and attacked. It was first. Well, how can it be first and 17 at the same a, time? Surprise, surprise attack. Why would there surprise. be? Never mind. Go ahead. You gave, I mean, you guys were sneaking around and gave it the opportunity to attack first. Well, we knew it was there, so it's not a surprise run. She was looking at it. She was wandering about, and it rushed her. It has pounce. Okay. Uh, it missed. I think 15 misses you, Lama. Is that correct? Is she still here? Did she leave? Good. Lama, you're muted. I'm sorry, I was in the bathroom. I'm sorry, what am I missing? Oh, no, that's okay. Uh, it tried to bite you. Does 15, uh, uh, does 15 bite you? You know, it bit me once. No, 15 doesn't bite me. Okay, and I need you to make a will save against a fear spell. Mm. Well, it's not a spell. Like, it just emanates fear. Um, oh. Come on, baby. Rolling the dice. Rolling the dice, it says. Still rolling the dice. <laughs> Yeah. Daddy 20, Lama, you you steal yourself against this thing, and as it tries to bite you, you sort of like, not on my watch, but Bjorn, this this the unearthly power of this creature and being down in this in this pit with it and in this darkness uh has unnerved you and you gain the panicked can get condition. Uh, you drop anything you hold and flee at top speed from the source of the fear as well as unearned dangers along a random path. Now, your path is not going to be very random, but you drop your sword and shield and go in the other direction. Mm. So go ahead and move a single move action around the other, the other way. You could do that. Well, I guess you could. You, would, you wouldn't do it right now. So, but um, on your turn, you you begin running away. Okay. You, Lama, you hear his sword and shield clatter to the stone floor. John, you're up. 
So do I think that I can move into this area over here faster? Or is it, is you would have to do an acrobatics roll because it's big. It takes up a fair amount of space there. You don't think you can get in there? Not without doing it. I mean, if you do the uh, an acrobatics roll to get past... Uh, you need to go outside? To get past them, you potentially can. Okay. I'm going to cast the spell. Okay. It's uh, called Evolution Surge. Okay. And I'm going to put shadow form on myself. All right. Which basically means that my attacks affect incorporeal creatures as if I had ghost touch. Gotcha. Okay. Smart. No, what do you do with your next? What do you do with your next uh, action? I've got a move. Is all I've got left. Left, and I, I guess I'm going to try. It's, but it's a. Uh, I don't have inspire competence anymore, right? No, it's inspire courage. It's courage now. Yeah, I'm going to try to do an acrobatics move. Seventeen to get past the creature into this area. Okay, 17. I think the difficulty check on that is 20, but hold on. Let me double check. Uh, acrobatics. Okay. Uh, move through threatened squares. Move through. So in this case, you're moving through an enemy's space. It is five plus opponent's CMD, which is CMD. They always hide it. CMD is 25, so 30 would have been required. And you rolled a 17. So, yeah, you try, but you stop uh, right there next to Lama. You're actually in a position where you're squeezed now um, right uh, right there. Since you only went five feet, it doesn't get an attack of opportunity. But now you see it, this little bright eyes looking right at you. Well, I realize this thing's pretty tough to get past. All right. Yep. Lama, you're up. So am I in a squeezed position now too? Yes, I would think yes, because John John tried to run past you and didn't uh, and didn't make it. So what's that do to my rolls? I'm raging now, by the way. I'm a little ticked off. Okay. So what's the is there a negative? How so uh, yeah, so you take minus four on attack and minus four penalty to AC. Jeez, Louise. Okay, well, I'm going to take two swings at it. Okay. Remember to minus four. Well, well, we'll have to just take it off. Still get a bonus for Inspire Courage. No, that's all on there already. And my raging just added plus four. Oh, Shit, so 31? I well, I fumbled. I, I might have fumbled, but then I come back with uh, 35. So I Wait, what? 31, yeah. Oh, all right. So that would, so if you're going to use the 35 for your confirm, then it is not a confirmed fumble, but that is the end of your turn. <laughs> I'm like, John, take some room, dude. What's going on, man? Hey. <laughs> Ten, fingers, John Heil. Heil. Ten fingers, John Heil. Ten fingers, John Heil. All right. And now I got a negative four to my AC. Yep. Fiat, you're up. Okay. Um, so I'm on the, the opposite side of the bookcase. Right? Yeah, you just saw. Yeah, you're on the opposite side of a bookcase, and you just heard John Hale just John Hale kind of like ran out of that space, and then you hear him like, "Oof!" Okay. You know. All right. And Lama um, goes, "Hey, John, what the heck, man? Give me, give me some room. I can't fight okay. like this." All right. Um, I was hoping my friend Bjorn would be there to. Well, my plan was this. <laughs> be there in a second. Bjorn would um, lift his shield. I would hop on his shield, and he would alley oop me over the bookcase, <laughs> and I would awesome. stab this thing. But uh, he's um, okay. Uh, you know, that, what, what you don't know that, that anything's bad happened to him. You just know that he ran. He 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 ran down at the bottom of the U and came right. up and went on the other side. Okay. Okay. So the ceiling less, or is it just uh, like up somewhere? No, they don't go quite up to the ceiling. So the bookcases are probably seven feet tall. They're not very high. Okay. And the ceiling is probably close to 13 or 14 feet tall. So there is space right. in there. All right. Um, um, can I climb up this bookshelf? 
Sure. And, and get on top. Yep. And then can I stab down with my? Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a big creature. Yeah, you could probably, you know, from where you guys are, Beltran, you and and Phineas and those guys, probably over the top of the bookcase, see this swirling, um, uh, you know, sort of sort of uh, shadowy substance. Okay. Um. Here's what I'm trying to do. I, I would love to be able to climb this bookshelf and then do a backstab if I can. Oh, you, oh, so you'd... Uh, be able to I'm sorry? You won't be able to do a backstab, but you can do a climb check, and then, yeah, you're pretty much right up against it once you do that. Okay. Yeah, you can stab him, but you can't get you can't get into a flanking position. Okay. Well, um, now, wait a second. He can still technically flank with Bjorn, just from the... If, so if he goes... So I'm imagining he's climbing up. If he climbs up, he ends up yeah. here. Yeah, if he gets right there for this Bjorn round. Bjorn hasn't moved yet. Even though he's feared, he hasn't had time to run. So he's still technically... In flanking position, yeah, you could get backstabbed. Okay. Well, it's so not backstabbed, but you know what I mean. Where should I go? You just climb up right there on top of it right there. All right, so I, I, I get a plus. Uh, is If Phineas is still jabbing, then I get a plus uh, 13 to climb. And uh, no, so it's courage now. It's not, courage. Uh, it's not inspire competence. It's inspire courage. So you'll okay, get a so, plus three on your attack. Okay, so it's um, plus... Uh, 10 then all right sure um got it got it got it got it got it hold on please here we go i roll a, a 12 ah oh, jeez yeah you get the uh, <laughs> you start climbing up there and the books are sort of kicking out and the, honestly the shelves are not very good uh so you get you get kind of up there but you don't make it quite up there because you find yourself having to having it's not easy to it's not as easy to climb as you thought right you try to climb it again and get up there for next round but you won't get the chance to attack May I climb again, and can I get set up for a backstab? Uh, yes, I think okay. yes, if you succeed in your climb check. Yes, sir. Uh, then that's what I want to do. I, I oh, want to get set up for next round to backstab. Okay. So here we go again. I roll a... Uh, 15, geez. that's better. And you do finally get to manage to get up on top of the bookcase. So I'm um, right here. But you can't, yeah, you can't attack. Now you can right. position yourself within five feet either way on that bookcase if you want. Okay. Uh, where's best? A here or a here or what? what? Uh, it's up to you. I cannot, I, I cannot, as the DM, advise you on this. Respect. Uh, um, I will go there and my uh, short sword is uh, out. Okay. Sounds good. Beltran. You just saw Fiat just scramble up this bookcase, and now he's up top. He's got a sword, and he's looking down to stab something. Okay. Um, I don't know when anything's going on. Well, I did probably hear a sword and a shield drop to the ground, didn't I? Uh, give me a perception check. Yeah, you would have heard that, it, odd, oddly. Um, Fiat, give me a perception check, too. Yes, sir. I will do that. Uh, let me see. Perception to see if you, if you see the look on Bjorn's face. Um, Bjorn, you wear a full-face uh, helmet, right? Yeah. Okay. So you wouldn't necessarily see the look on his face, but you wouldn't theoretically see the, his sword and shield. Yeah, you do. You see uh, Bjorn's sword and shield lying on the ground. Bjorn, wait, 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 I, I keep my mouth shut. Okay. <laughs> All right, Beltran, you heard this too. You're not sure. I mean, it sounded like a sword and a shield dropped. That's not something you hear very often. Um, okay. except, except from your enemies. Right. <laughs> I'm casting a spell and holding the charge. Okay. What spell? Protection from evil. Protection from evil. All right. Sounds good. And you're going to just hold it. That's and as far as I can get. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Uh, we're at the top of the order. I'm going to reload uh, my Diet Coke. I'll be right back. Fix yourself some drinks, people. Okay. okay. Good. So I planned on casting protection from evil before my melee guy ran off. <laughs> but as it stands, I just looked at the spell. Mm -hmm. And it's going to immediately give... Bjorn another save at plus two because it's an evil. I assume this is an evil demon. So there is an assumption there, but that's a good assumption. But yeah, the protection from evil will give him an immediate plus two, an additional save. Cool. 
And I'm an idiot because I had reach. I didn't even have to do what I did. I could have just attacked from where I was at. So now I remember. Now, it still doesn't help. I, I was hoping I could cast the spell and get there and touch him, but if it's, oh, too, it's too far. Okay, I'm back. Uh, also, I just want you guys to remember that you do still have the stone that summons uh, the demonologist Xerxes. So um, if, if it comes to that point, um, you can use that. He's going to run past you, though, Mike, so you can just touch him when he runs past you. All right, next up, Phineas, what's up? So uh, did my blistering invective cause no damage? It's it's hard to tell since you kills you still can't see the guy, um, but you you know you you know it landed. So I it seems to me from where I'm standing I can see. No, so there's the, the this bookcase is in the way. You see it? How uh, tall is it, Russ? Huh? Didn't you say she was pretty? She's large or huge? Large. The creature? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, that's true. Yeah, so over the top of the bookcase, you can see a swirling blackness uh, with these two pinprick kind of red eyes, glowing red eyes. Um, it did, yeah, I mean, you know that, I mean, smoke came out of your mouth. I mean, you're pretty sure the spell landed. You're just not sure how much, if any, damage it did. And so I want to take a knowledge check and see if I have any idea what the heck this thing is. Okay. Uh, do knowledge planes. Okay, not my best roll, but okay. Uh, come on. 24, you suspect that this might be a shadow demon. Um, and for 24, um, I can tell you that the thing about shadow demons is that like many demons, um, it has the ability uh, to teleport. And it also, uh, it's, in particular, shadow demons are incorporeal. Ooh. Okay, well, I pass this information along to my colleagues. Okay. So they're in. So do I know anything about what the weaknesses or how do I attack or what are... How well, I... it's, a, it's a creature of the darkest pits of the abyss. I mean, realistically, um, light is, is really the only thing that you can think of that, that might, you know, um, that might be, uh, you know, it's, it's weak spot. Okay, so everybody, light up. Turn on the lights. Um, does, does everyone feel like the, I should stay with Inspire Courage or switch to Competence? Because it seems like I... Courage. Courage, okay. Um, I... Jeez. Uh, so would I be able to speak to him using an abyssal? Do you yep. speak to the creature? Yep. Not using message, but yeah, you if you you could yell out in abyssal something. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, let's try to make friends. I'm going to use my diplomacy and say, "What is it you want? What What do we need to do? We're just here for peaceful purposes. We came to get some information and do some research. We don't want to harm you, and we don't want you to harm us." All right. Give me a. <laughs> Diplomacy <laughs> check. I, this is a great <laughs> tactic. I never thought about just trying to say if 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 attacked by a demon, to say, "Hey, we're just here for the beer. I just want to be friends." I think yeah. we can do it. Well, Thirty-two. Well, um, oh. So the creature, the creature looks over at you very curiously. It doesn't say anything, but it looks over across the thing. You can see that sort of it coalesce into sort of like a a very you know, sort of alien-esque head, and it sort of looks at you very curiously, uh, and then, and then, kind of like you can see it sort of like has a has like a tendril that kind of reaches out over over the over the thing that kind of like points at you. Um, it doesn't seem to be doing uh, uh, anything else. Differently. 
Yeah, it doesn't seem to be doing anything differently, but um, you're not sure how well that worked. Nice so I, I, using my knowledge of diplomacy and body language, do I get warm fuzzies from that? No, uh, you do. Oh. Shadow demons don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> Usually they are, I mean, they are the servants of larger, more evil demons. So, uh, you know, you don't know that this guy even has the option of being friends with you. Okay. So I suspect pointing to me, he may be, or it may be. I think he just said good one. Others, but that's just a guess. Um, well, remember the start. Uh, so th at this point, you remember, Phineas, at the start of this adventure, when you guys were back at Master Bashir's and talking to these guys and talking to the imp. And the imp's story was that all demons are servants to greater demons. To you know, to whoever they are, but those those greater demons don't always demand services of demons. Uh, the imp had been operating pretty much at will uh, for a while, but had been recently called back into service, and the location of that call had come from under. Well, it, 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 the best they could tell was the Temple of Caden Kaelian. That's what brought you on this thing in the first place. This could be another instance of that being the case, of this this particular demon being a servant, another servant of that same demon. Hmm. So do we need to call that our friend Xerxes again? I don't know. Um, I, I'm just going to keep singing. Okay. Do you move at all or anything like that? Uh, just my bowels. <laughs> okay. Uh, Bjorn, time to run. So you are now uh, running. You're in panicked condition. You need to move your full movement rate in as away from the Shadow Demon as is humanly possible. You can't get to there. Why not? Because you've got to go through me. Oh, he's yeah. making the you, I think. Yeah, but you're a friendly square. But I'm not letting you pass. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, so wh this... what do you do to stop him? So I get to here. So he gets to there. He's going to have to touch me to get past me. And, then that, yeah. and at that yes. point, he gets hit with that protection from evil. Okay. Protection from evil, which I didn't... This isn't why I initially did the spell, but I just read it after I... Made the thing. Mm -hmm. Any kind of effects from evil creatures that's already affecting him, he gets an additional, an immediate save at the plus two. Okay. Excellent. Go for it. So this is at plus four. Oh, Natty 20. So you are so, oh. Bjorn, you turn to run. This creature has so frightened you that you've dropped your weapons and your shield. You turn to run, and there's Beltran. Uh, who I believe is an elf, right? No, Asimar. Asimar. So Beltran is standing there. Asimars don't weigh uh, a great no. deal. Probably, probably, what, 160 pounds soaking wet? Probably. And here comes Bjorn, uh, a seven-foot Viking warrior decked out in full plate mail. And he's panicked. <laughs> he's running down. And you're like, stop! Um, and <laughs> you get blown backwards because it's the thing. But you, you grab him and you're like, Bjorn! I need you in front you're, of me. Dude. You are protected. And Bjorn, you're just like, Whoa. you shake it off. And you, you're like, oh, you're right. I'm not scared. I'm a warrior from Evanston. I can do this. And uh, where's my sword? And you're like, you look around. You're like, oh, shit. It's right over there. So, uh, yeah, it's a successful thing. You, uh, Bjorn, you, you're pushed back by Bjorn into the, into the uh, bookcase. As um, Bjorn, yeah. He's trying to get past you. But you do manage to deliver the spell, and it shakes, uh, it shakes Bjorn out of his uh, out of his fear, and you see him. Uh, well, you don't see him, but you can hear him grit his teeth behind his uh, behind his uh, full face helmet and return to the fray. Now you got protection from evil, so plus two AC against this guy, and and he, now he's got protection from evil. If this thing's a summoned creature, it can't touch you. And, if it got there, are other means that it can still touch you. And shame in his eyes because Beltran is now judging him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Beltran whispers, oh. kiss, kisses, oh. kisses, uh, oh, Lil Bjorn. You saw a very scared Beltran say, dude, I need you in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Beltran leans over, kisses him on the cheek, and says, your secret is safe with me. <laughs> right. 
Uh, all right. So that's. So here's my yeah, question. Good, here's my question. I did half a move to get here. Yep. So do I still have my other half of the move or not? Yes, but that's all you can do. Yeah, no, I'm good with that. Okay. So now I'm going to move back here so that mm -hmm. next round I can pick my shit up. Yep. Gotcha. Cool. Okay, cool. And deliver. You still are delivering the flanking bonus, you sneaky bastard. I see what you're doing there. I oh. see what you're doing. Okay. All right. Thinking that you have been effectively feared, the creature's not paying attention to you at all, but is going to uh, attack. Uh, in this case, I think he's going to try and attack John Heil, and he's going to do a full attack. Claw, claw, bite on John. So claw. Ooh, let's re-roll that to see if that's a confirmed crit. 29 hit you? Yep. Ooh, confirmed crit on a claw. Second claw. 24 hit you? Nope. And bite as it leans its snaky head down. 18. Okay, so one confirmed crit. So let me go ahead and boot up the chart. So this is an incorporeal claw. So there might be some instances where it doesn't make sense what the hell it tells us. Oh, about. wait a minute, Les. I forgot I'm close. That 24 hits two. Uh, the second claw hits two? All right, so let's go ahead. Oh, sorry, the first claw does... Um, 1d6 physical damage, three points of physical damage, and four points of cold damage as it passes through you. Uh, the crit, and this would be a natural attack. Ooh, geez, right in the ear, it says. Target suffers maximum plus bonus. So max damage in this case would be six physical and six, uh, uh, and six uh, cold. And then yeah, another... That replaces three and the four. Is that what you're, that no, right? that's the that was I did the second claw first. So, six and six. so this is the crit claw. So six, so ten physical damage total from this first claw, and another nine cold. So total, you have thirteen physical damage and thirteen cold damage from the two cold Ooh. claws. Ooh, and you get one point of intelligence damage and one point of bleed. Damn. From that claw, and he missed. He missed the bite, so that's him. And he is gonna stay right there. He did a full attack, so that's all. Um, all right, uh, then. Not quite John Hiles' turn yet, because player two has entered the game. Oh shit! Phineas, give me a perception check. Hey. Hey, bro, on our side. I'm sorry? So is that a hero on our side? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is what she looks like. Nope, that's wrong. Uh, that's wrong. Forget that. She looks like a fingerless corpse. I, I, I clicked on the wrong thing. <laughs> this is what she looks like. That's not a sucky is it? Uh, don't know. I mean, um, I do know, but I can't tell you. Phineas, percept, yeah. please. I'm using succubuses in your campaigns. <laughs> 19 so yeah you hear a voice behind you a feminine voice a seductive voice the only say, place you can use a mic say where have you say something like where have you been all my life and you turn around and you see that woman standing there and it's pretty much the woman that brother um uh brother uh oh, that guy described it was the brother whose name i can't <laughs> i can't ever remember that wings and all that uh, well, yeah, so she, he, he's like, you know, older woman, very pretty, about 40. Uh, but yes, he did not mention bat wings. He did not mention horns, both of which this woman has. Mm. Oh, great. And he was off on age by about 380 years. <laughs> <laughs> she begins moving forward towards you until she stops uh, in front of this table on the other side of the table. And she looks at you with those deliciously deep eyes. Uh oh. And uh, she does, as a spell like ability, um, dominate uh, person. Charm Phineas. Charm Phineas. So she is going to try and dominate you. And immediately you realize so I need a will save from you. Well, wait a minute. I'm resistant to charm. Are you? Yes. 
This is an, a mind affecting enchantment. It's not a charm spell per se. Uh, you are immune to oh, magic sleep. Of, um, I thought I had some. What are you, an elf? Half elf. I don't know if half elves get it. I know elves get like a plus two to save versus. Give yeah. plus, I'll give you plus yeah. two for half elf. Plus two versus mind affecting. It's definitely a mind affecting compulsion. All right. So, what am I supposed to roll? Uh, you need to do a will save. No. Okay. Roll uh, good. Oh, where's my will save? She says, where have you been all my life? And it, well, part of it is the words coming out of her mouth, and then you begin to hear her in your head. Okay. Like it's, it's like you can hear her and hear her. Ooh, that is not so good. You feel her presence inside your head, and she tells you, come over here and talk to us for a moment. So you are under the effect of dominate person. Uh, a, this creature can control the actions through a telepathic link that she has established in your mind. Uh, she, she is speaking to you in abyssal, which you, uh, well, she said, where have you been all my life in common? But now that she's in your brain, she knows you speak abyssal and she's speaking to you in abyssal. And <laughs> she, wants, she wants your best idea as to how to, how to defeat your friends. So think about what you would do if you were your friend's enemy. Uh, and we'll see what happens on your turn. She now, also, in, now instead of Final Countdown, he's playing Opa Gangnam Style. <laughs> <laughs> he's playing something. John Heil, you are up. You are okay. still squeezing unless you move. Yeah, I'm going to take a five foot step back because I'm an idiot. I forgot I have reach, so I didn't even have to do that. All right. you uh, Give me percept real quick. Actually, I'm going to move to there. That's not her. And, Andrew, do, do we still have? Yes. Are you still playing? Yes. yes. But I'm not playing it. My magical instrument is playing. So give me, give me a perception check. Who? Me? Uh, no, John Heil. <laughs> Nat 20. You, gotta, you guys got to stop yeah. these for perception checks and pile them into combat. You, yeah. you step backwards and you get ready to attack from reach against the creature. And you look over at Phineas and you see, you see his loot sort of floating in the background and you hear at the same time you see it, you hear it sort of like do a discordant note uh, that seems sort of like a ching, you know, that kind of thing. It's still playing, uh, but something's wrong. And you see Phineas looking at uh, what looks to be a, 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 a older woman with horns and bat wings, and she's smiling gleefully as Phineas kind of goes over, is sort of starting to walk around the table towards her. Uh oh. Okay, free action. I'm going to say, Llama, we got an issue. You need to go deal with that. I can take on the shadow creature. And then I'm going to do a full attack on the shadow creature. You didn't All right. me there the first time, and now I got flanking, and now you're telling me that I gotta go move. I'm only gonna. <laughs> I mean, seriously, John, and I'm sulk. I will sulk over there to this woman. Now I'm really pissed. You'll like her. She's pretty. So I heard John say this, right? Uh, you hear John's, yeah, you can hear him say, we've got a, we've got a problem that you need, I'll, I'll leave, leave the shadow demon to me, you, we got a problem over there, go help him, or something, I don't know what, you, what exactly oh. you say. Good lord. How many ones did you roll? All right, so 27, 19, and 32? Yep. All right, and you, uh, very, uh, very intelligently put your things on there, so... Uh, it, it's actually large and quite easy to hit. So all three of those are hits. But it is, it is shocked when your ensorcelled claws come raking over its body because it, it generally re relies on its incorporeality to, uh, to keep it safe from physical damage. Does bleed or acid affect it? Uh, that's a great question, and I don't know the answer. Uh, I don't think it's immune to bleed. Uh, it does. Um, it will have resistance to acid, though. OK. 
Okay, well, I'm just going to roll the base damage, so that's going to be... So 51, and then bleed will be... What? Bleed's going to be 11. You want me to roll acid, or does that not... Uh, well, it has it has resistance ten to acid. So if it's if you, if you can't get more than ten damage on acid, it's um, a d six per. So I mean three hits, three d six. But I don't know if you count that. It's all it'd be three uh, different attacks. So neither, none of them would make make it through. Okay, so that so the acid won't matter. Okay, so but the fifty one points and what was the d six? What is that? Bleed. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of bleed, yeah. Eleven of bleed, okay. How do you bleed a shadow demon? Shadow stuff is pouring out onto the floor it, from your insertion closet. I don't know, is it, is it not immune to bleed? Uh, I don't think so. Um, let me do the damage. All right, so that's the damage you did. Let me, I got to check on this to see if it's immune to bleed. Uh, I don't see that it is. Outsiders are, aren't automatically immune to no. bleed, I don't think. No. No, it should say it in there somewhere. It doesn't. It does not say that it is immune to bleed. Cool. It's got several immunities that are listed here, but bleed isn't one of them. So it does, yeah, it does the bleed damage. Um, nicely done, uh, John Heil. It did uh, significant damage there. All right. Uh, and there's a full attack, so you want to make a five-foot step or anything like that? I already did to get to where I was. So gotcha. All right. Llama sulking away as John Isle hits. Uh, I'm sure she's going to say, what, you couldn't do that to the sucky bitch? Seriously? <laughs> you you got a much better chance at that sucky bitch than I do, babe. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm pissed. I'm doing a power attack. I got one swing. Okay. What did you get? 29. And what is your sword made out of? It's plus two. It is not cold iron. Okay. Uh, okay. It's not good aligned either? No. Okay. All right. So yeah, it's a hit. You hit her. Half damage, right? Something like that. That was probably a DR5 or 10. It's, yeah, DR5 or 10. I'm not going to tell you what. 1D10 plus 16. Yeah, she's still going to feel this, but not as much as she would have. 24 points of damage. Okay, so you do hit her, and she, she you hit her in the arm, and she rears it back and hisses at you like a cat. And then you, uh, Phineas, you hear in your head, aid, aid me. Uh, um, human, aid me, Phineas. Uh, strike at that, strike at that half orc, and, and keep me safe. As a free action, I'm going to look at Phineas and say, what is up? What are you doing over here? And he looks at you, and uh, you see a look of purest hate. Uh, a Phineas directed at you as Phineas bends to attack. It looks, it looks like he's going to attack you. So having been dungeoneering long enough, do I recognize this as he's been mind-controlled? Well... Phew. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you guys run into it, sucky Phineas bitch. probably doesn't get too many hateful looks. Like, I know. like, why would Phineas look at me hatefully? Obviously. Well, it is it is odd. Certainly, I don't know if you guys run into succubus before. Yeah, you've run into succubus yes. before. So yeah, I mean, you would recognize this creature as a succubus, and one of and you guys will remember that one of succubus a succubus's primary weapon is charming and enchanting um, creatures to do his bidding before he drains them dry. So yeah, your suspicion is that he's he's compulsed. Yeah, great. That's what I said. Great. Phineas is lost in the gaze. Over here. <laughs> great. You say anything out loud? Yeah, that's what I'm saying out loud. Great. Must save Ethereon, says Phineas. Uh, all right, so that's you, Lama. Uh, Fiat, you are standing on top of a bookcase with your short sword in your hand. Great. Um. Can I leap down and uh, backstab this uh, horrible you, demon? You don't have to. Bjorn's right there. You've got flanking position, which gives you which gives you your sneak attack damage. I'm gonna go for it. Um, um, remind me. I'm sorry. Uh, which move should I? Uh, which skill? 
should I use um, for uh, which... oh to attack just to attack yes. I mean it's just an attack roll with your oh I gotcha, thing. gotcha. okay so my your attack roll um, now is your, is your sword magical or have any capabilities or anything like that it, it's a plus one plus one okay and um, it's a <clears throat> plus one a short sword um, and it is a here hang on a minute um, you get some pretty substantive sneak attack damage too right at okay. your level uh, well, uh, I'm at level. Da, 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 da. What, what, what am I? Uh, level. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, what am I? Good, good God. What level six. <laughs> level six. Level okay. six. I'm a level six halfling oh, thief. Uh, uh, it's three d six is the is the amount of damage. Okay, and uh, my full attack with my plus one short sword, I get plus e. 11 to hit, so here go we for go. Go for it, dude. Uh, da, 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 da. Give me my dice roll. Right. Come here. Plus 11. Uh, 24. 24. Come on, come on. <laughs> so your, uh, hold on a second. Um, so Here's the thing. Creatures with incorpor incorporeal condition do not have a physical body. Incorporeal creatures are immune to all non-magical attack forms. They take half damage from magic weapons, spells, and spell-like effects. So, yeah, you hit him with that 24, but your sword just passes right through him. Go ahead and roll damage and roll the sneak attack damage, and he'll take half. Uh, we'll take half of that, and then I will apply the DR as necessary. Okay, um, well, the base damage is, uh, for a short sword is D4 plus one. Mm -hmm. so, All right. Plus, I'm still doing Inspire Courage. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, then, okay. For a so, moment, that's going to end pretty quick, though. It's automatic, yeah. Um, so does that, um, hold on. I'm sorry, uh, friends. Uh, um, it says my uh, full attack da damage is uh, D4 plus one, um, and mm -hmm. so I should I roll just D4 pl plus one? Yes. Or and then three D6 of sneak attack damage. I got you. I got you. Okay. So there's so three, three points. Great. Okay. Of weapon damage. Three D6 coming up. Here we go. One, two, three. Um, come on. Da, 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 da. And 14. Ooh, damn, 14. So 17 total. Cut in half would be eight. Um, it has DR10. So your sword passes directly through it. And while it notices you, you mm -hmm. don't seem to have done any damage to it. Any actual damage to it. I did my best. All right. Damn. But a, yeah. uh, a valiant effort. Beltran, you see Fiat just slashing away with his sword at this creature. Uh, in, in uh, you know, the, the noble, brave hobbit slicing away, trying to help his friend Bjorn. Less is a free action. I'm going to yell up to Fiat to go attack the demon in the other room that I can take care of this thing. Okay. Uh, I will, um, except now I'm on the opposite side of this. Okay, wait. I'm sorry. Am I still on top of the... You're on top of the bookshelf. You're on top of the bookcase. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, cool. All right. So in my n next turn, I will uh, do something. Okay. Beltran, you're up. All right, here we got another threat and seeing this guy surrounded. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get right there, peek around the corner. Okay. You see Llama fighting a succubus, and Phineas looking like he's about to fight Llama. Son of a... All right. Um, I am going to cast Prayer, which gives... All my friends, plus one to pretty much all their roles, and the enemies need to make a DC. Say that again, Mike. What are you doing? Prayer. Oh. Which okay. All my friends, plus one to pretty much all their die rolls. Yep. That gives a negative one to all the enemies, but they do have a save against it. 
All right. What's the saving throw on that? And it's a will save, correct? It is. Yeah, I will save. Consider a spell. And the DC is third level. So the DC is 17. All right. This for the succubus makes it. This for the shadow demon makes it. So they are they are not negatively affected. Right. So it's just uh, response to all my friends. I love it. Okay. So um Oh, they both have spell resistance too, so I should have factored that in. But they both made their save, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, all right, cool. But yeah, everybody gets plus one on for prayer. It's pretty much everything you can do. Yeah. All right, uh, Phineas. Yes. Uh, she already put in my in your mind to think of the worst thing that you can do to the, the your your now enemies uh, in the party. But now that Lama's here and struck her. You are, you are, your compulsion, you have an overriding compulsion to stop Lama in whatever way that you know is best to try and stop her. So if you were trying to stop, imagine that things were reversed and this creature was attacking Lama, how would you go about stopping it? I'd hold out like a bone necklace or a um, glittery uh, piece of weaponry. What? For Lama? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, you need you need to figure out a way to st you got to figure out how to stop her. How do you stop Lama? I don't. <laughs> I've never. I, it's <laughs> something I would never even. It's not one of our uh, much less powerful. But now you are. It's you're compelled to do it by your newest and bestest friend. Well, then I would tempt her with a plus five magical. <laughs> Two-handed sword. What? I would drop one and then make her go, ooh, a plus five double-handed sword. I must get that. You don't have a plus five double-handed sword. Hey, oh, no. I just dropped my plus five magical sword on the ground. <laughs> That's what I would do. I, I know Llama likes jewelry and powerful weapons. That, that's it. I would I, that I was never think about it. I didn't try to stop Llama. I always try to encourage Llama. That is the perfect move. Well done. I'm thrilled. The raging, so you probably wouldn't even notice it. Oh, I'll notice it. Exactly. It's exactly what I needed. Proof. The guy is off his nut. He's about to be unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you What do you do, Phineas? I just gave you my best guess for how I would stop Lama. Well, you I, have now. Wait a second. You don't have a sword. You don't. It's not going to work. You have. You have to. You have to do something. You're being, okay. She controls so, your mind, so you got to. You got to. You got to try to stop her. Somehow. All right. So I feebly, uh, with wobbly <laughs> hand, try to grasp one of my cold iron tip arrows from my quiver. So that Lama sees, oh, he's got cold iron tipped arrows. I must take it from him. <laughs> you cannot change this. This is who Phineas is. Yeah, well, he's comp but he's under compulsion. He's under dominate person. You got right. you, so you to do it. Grab the arrow. Try to grab the arrow, but I'm Good. drunk with love. So my yeah, grab your weapon and just swing at her. Joe's a dominated guy who doesn't fight, so this is the result. Well, so but he would then he would cast a spell, right? So if you dominate a wizard, she can you know, and she's like, defend me. His you know, he okay. has powers. Right. So I try to fascinate Llama. I use a fascinate. I pull out a cold iron tip arrow and try to fascinate her with it. <laughs> do you have cold iron tipped arrow? Yes, I do. All right, all right. I'm gonna have to look at that. Uh, I'm gonna have to, all right, so you try to fascinate her. All right, so what's the will save? You see Phineas, uh, Lama, you see Phineas pull out an arrow and sort of like wave it at you, and you find yourself being drawn to the, to the, to the tip going back and forth. I'm saying don't do it. Don't you do it. <laughs> do I have to do my will save now? Uh, we got to see, yeah, we to see the DC is. Hold on a second. Uh, I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. 15. All right. So you are doing that performability with your charisma boss. Uh, and so DC 15 and you roll a 14. So, 
does that plus one help for prayer? Yeah. No, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It, I thought plus one on everything. <laughs> I don't yeah, think that works. It does. Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> Beltran, you have screwed my plans twice now today. But I, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right, so Lama, you, you, you see Phineas is like, look into my eyes kind of thing. And he's waving an arrow at you and you begin to be drawn in and you can hear him sort of like singing under his breath and you find yourself, uh, you know, falling into the music and the words and stuff like that. And then you just, at the last second, you hear Beltran, <laughs> you hear Beltran praying in the distance and suddenly you're just, your eyes snap back and you're like, what, what? What am I just doing? And you can see the uh, the succubus over there is uh, is getting ready to pounce in some way or maybe, maybe attack you. You're not sure. All right, so that's Phineas. Bjorn, what do you do? So as a move action, I'm going to retrieve my sword and shield. Okay. And then with my single attack, can I? If I only have one attack, can I still do power attack? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do power attack. All right, is your is your is your sword magical at all? It's cold iron. Col just cold iron, but no magical bonuses. Correct. Cold iron oh. masterwork. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So we'll try that. All right. Uh, 27, that would be a hit for 23 damage. Again, you feel your sword pass through, but then you feel like the cold iron sort of like sticks in it a little bit, uh, and you do some damage to it. It's not nearly as much as you'd hope, though. Um, There we go. As your sword passes through the, this shadow creature, and it looks up, uh, you see the you see the the head the what you would loosely call the head to sort of spin around uh, and look at you with those red eyes, and then look back at John Heil. It. Uh, are you going to move it all, or you spent the you picked up your stuff? Yeah. Um, all right. So the creature. Looks at John. Let me make sure. Let me see if it has reach, which I think it does because it's big. Uh, maybe it does not have reach, but it will go ahead and fly. It does not have reach, so it is. But it's going to go ahead and fly a five-foot fly towards you, John, and then do its full attack on you with its claws. First so claw. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Just to check real quick before you do that, uh -huh. I have step up. So it moved a five foot away from me. Yes, it did. So I can move a five foot up against it. Okay. Yep. Yes, you can. I'm going to, you got your, you picked up your stuff. So I'm going to take your this stuff. Uh, all right. So uh, first roll claw 28. Se second claw 21. Miss. Miss. And the bite. Another miss. So one claw. So uh, um, three points of physical damage and one point of cold damage. It's, it's claws and stuff pass through you. Uh, and that's its turn. Now it's the um, succubi's turn, and she disappears. Boop. Uh, John Heil. All right, I'm all over this thing. So I get a... Right. 22. Let me check. I think that's a hit. It's pretty easy to hit. Yeah, that's a hit. Whoa. All three of those are hits. Oh man! Okay. Well, we got I'm getting three. smeared by this guy. <laughs> so that's normal damage. Yep. Damn. Bleed damage from before still applies, right? So uh, it does. You can add that, and then I've got another 3d6 of bleed damage. So, four, so five, six, seven, eight, nine in addition to the last one. All right, you see shadow stuff just coursing out of this guy, and he, it seems, it, 
in for the first time in this unfire, entire fight seems to know fear. You see it cringing backwards towards Bjorn as it's looking around. Lama, you are up. The succubus is gone. Phineas is still trying to kill you, or fascinate you in this case. Call out, I call out just pin him. I'm going to try and dispel what she did. Okay. You guys realize you have a raging barbarian that's basically mm -hmm. being tossed from one babysitting job to another to like hold things and move and she hasn't hit shit? <laughs> what do you think is going to happen here? Uh, I think Lamb is going to stick a sword in Phineas is probably what's going to happen. <laughs> so you tell me to pin Phineas? That's I'm going to try, try, but yeah, if you're Raging, there's probably not much chance of like, Oh my Fest god, I grab Phineas by the neck and put him against the wall. <laughs> Festivus is until over until Lama pins Phineas. So, what kind of a role is that? All right, so that would be so what, essentially what you're doing is a grapple check. So, Phineas, you have a uh, a combat maneuver defense number. I need to know that number. And Lama, you are going to try and grapple him. So that's a CMB. That's a, a D20 plus your CMB. So, Andrew, what's your CMD on your character? Plus one for prayer. 19. 19. Uh, yeah, I think prayer would count in here. But I'm not her friend or his friend at the moment. Uh, <laughs> you don't get any uh, – she's, she's trying to grapple you. You don't, you don't have anything happen to you yet. You don't get to oh. do anything. Okay. Please. With a two, I still pin him. What did you get? A two, wait, which is a twenty. Did you did you roll? I rolled a two. I don't but see it. it. Well, it's there. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. So you rolled a twenty. Now it just showed up. Uh, so um, all right, so Lama, uh, raging, reaches over and grabs Phineas, grabs him by the neck, and pushes him up against the thing. Phineas, you are in the grappled condition. Um, and so let's, uh, it's it's always a problem. So you could do a couple of, you, you still have some options, um, but um, they are limited. Okay. I'd suggest you that way. I'm going to use my knowledge of uh, llama check to, okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, go ahead and roll. I guess that would be like a knowledge local. She's really local to you, so um, go ahead and roll knowledge local, which will supplant, which will substitute for knowledge llama. Okay. We should all have a knowledge llama. <laughs> all right, sixteen. What are you trying to figure out? I'm thinking if I should just like uh, resist or. Or just, like, take a rest. Well, so the smartest thing that you do, and you, so you're still compel, com, being compelled by the succubus, even though she's not there. And the succubus is like, you need to stop this woman. Um, but your thought is, you were originally like, well, I need to stop her from hurting the, hurting the succubus, my friend the succubus, Aphirion is her name. Uh, I needed to stop her from hurting Aphirion. Aphirion has, has teleported away. You can feel that. Um, Right now, the best way to hurt Llama is to pretend that you're cured so that you can get the jump on her. Okay. That's what you think you did. Yeah, that okay. would be the best strategy. This, does anybody else see this as the GM feeding anybody? He's leading the witness. Yes. No. He, he, did, he, he did a knowledge Llama check. I just told him what he learned. Oh, my God. Okay. Four of those llama, those llama checks. Those are awesome. Boy, I could sure use a beer right now. How about you, llama? Uh, all right, so that is Phineas, uh, uh, or llama's uh, thing. So you have Phineas grappled. Uh, Fiat, what are you doing? You going to try and strike this thing again? Or uh, do you have a really good angle on Beltran if you want to stab him? Uh, all right. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, where's the succubus? I don't know. Gone. Shit. You see, Lama is now. Uh, you're wondering if Lama is possessed because she's attacking Phineas. Oh. She's got Phineas by the neck, and she's just throwing him up against the bookcase. She oh, might shit. be uh, dominated too. I she's gotta dead. find this 
succubus. Um, my 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 plan was to leap off of the bookshelf. Um, message to Lama. Lama, catch me and launch me over the head of the succubus and behind her. <laughs> Toss me. Right. I mean, it, 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 you you you've got a flying halfling here. I mean, I got. Bjorn and Lama, who can just throw me, and I can be a, a, a good fire and stabber. Uh, uh, but all right, uh, da, 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 da. all right, you know, do I have anything to? Can, can I look? Can I try to perceive where, where the succubus might be? Sure. All right. I, so you're gonna take a look around, just do a perception check. Yeah. Where? She go. Okay. Um, D20 plus uh, 16 and 28. That's a good roll. You look around everywhere. You just do not see her. All right. Uh, then I, can I try to stab the um, sure. demon? All right. Absolutely. Here we go. You're still flanking, um, by the way, too. Okay. So it's, it's going to be a uh, um, backstab. Let's see. Um, D20 plus 11. I, I roll a, a four. Ah, uh, that is a miss, sadly. Okay. Okay. All right. That's it. Beltran of the Hill People. What do you do? Steam. Um, and Phineas, you're up next. I'm very curious to see what you do. Five foot step and casting um, protection from evil on Phineas. All right, Phineas, you get another saving throw against the uh, against the dominate person. That plus two, actually a plus three because the prayer is still going on. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, what do I roll? Uh, will uh, will save against uh, uh, at pl at plus three in a, uh, an addition to your current will save bonus, which is I don't know what. Plus six. Plus six. So you do a will save at plus nine. Okay. No. Well, oh, doesn't work. But here's an opportunity to. He still pretend. has. He still has protection from evil on him, though. Yep. You can pretend that you were that you yep. did save and shake it off. Mm. All right. I want to. Yep. All right, Beltran. That's that. You doing anything else, or did you have to walk up there to do that? I'm gonna thank, um, Llama, and tell her don't go too far. I'm gonna hit you with a spell next round, or I want to hit you with a spell next to protect you. Okay. Uh, all right. Do my thing. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay. So Phineas, you're up. What are you going to do? So you are still under compulsion from the succubus. You still, uh, uh, you still want to stop Lama from doing things, but now you realize that Beltran is a threat too, because you can hear him say, now I'm going to do a spell on you to help protect you from, from evil. And you definitely don't want him to do that. Um, he just did the spell on you and you're protected from evil, but you're still compelled, but they may not know that. And you thought your knowledge Lama role seemed to indicate that if you could, you could maybe try to trick her into thinking that you were all better and not compelled anymore so that you could get the jump on them and maybe you can fool these guys. I'm staring at him. Hard or staring at him. Eye to eye. He's taller now. Oh, it's getting Are you lifting him up? Yeah. By his, by his neck? Oh, this is the most frustrating battle I've been in in weeks. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty bad. Um, I Humans just, are tough. Come on, guys, let's get some beer. Great <laughs> oh bar, right up there, man. What are we doing down here? Yeah. yeah. So, is that what you're going to your Phineas? It's like we should. We got to get out of here. Um, yeah. Let's get out. Let's get some beer. Let's get out of here before they come back. Exactly. That's yeah. That's that's what I do. All right. Do a. Um, so that would be uh, a um, what's what's a d deception check? What uh, it's not called deception though. What it is? Um, bluff. 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 Do a bluff check. Oh, for fuck's sake! And don't forget to uh, don't forget to add your uh, your various I bonuses. Oh, I know. Remember, prayer is helping you. What'd you get? 
26. Awesome. So, uh, Lama and Beltran, both of you give me a sense motive. <laughs> One of my macros. Hmm. Gotta be flexible. Oh, this is gonna be great. I don't like this game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> The dice fall weird for everybody sometimes. All right, Beltran. My dice are still rolling. Okay. Why do your dice take so long to roll? That's weird. Okay, so you guys hear Phineas, you know, through his, you know, uh, Lamb has got him by the throat, and he goes, "We guys, we got to get out of here. We should go upstairs. Forget this thing. This is too dangerous. We got to go." And um, frankly, you both feel like. Yeah, maybe that is a good idea. You know, okay. you know. It doesn't it, do that. It just we view that in the best possible. I'm, there's no way I'm leaving in the middle of combat. Well, no, I think you would I, interpret I, it I, as saying, "Hey, gather up the team and let's get out of here." You know, I believe kind of him thing. saying that. Uh, I believe yep. he's he means that with whole heart. But okay, um, so that so that's that's just you talking. You did a check. What do you do? Anything else to to? Uh, I mean, you still have a couple of actions that you could spend here me yeah i'm pinned against the fucking wall well you could try to unpin yourself okay i start walking towards the bar <laughs> okay you try to un ungrapple essentially you fight to grapple so basically you need to make an escape artist check uh to try against um against llama's cmd okay my escape, escape artist is plus zero. Ooh. okay uh is there an there's another one that you can use is it regular cmb Mike, is that right? You can use that. Athletics? Yeah, he's going to use his CMB or escape artist against her CMB. CMB. What's your, C, what's your uh, combat maneuver bonus, the CMB? Combat maneuver bonus. It would be right there next to the CMD. Plus six. Plus six. That, use that one. That was what you're the trying way. to beat Llama's CMD. What's is your, that now, my CMD? Yeah, what's your CMD? A lot higher than that. Well, he gets to roll a 20. I and he gets it. Here's my roll. Oh, no. You tell us your CMD just... Oh, ooh, 25. What's your CMD, Lamb? I don't think it's going to be 25. It's plus 26. Oh, no. The, <laughs> the CMD, it's 26? Yeah. That's, oh, that's, no. You, you don't roll. No, but that's that's the, his defense, and he still didn't do it. He still didn't do it. Yeah, that's that's tough. So you're still pinned. You're still trapped. Oh, I really want a beer, guys. <laughs> okay. I'm really thirsty. You don't roll it. The 26 is a standalone. Oh. It's a. Yeah. It's like a difficulty check. It's like an I, AC. Yeah. It makes sense now. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Lots of things going on. Bjorn, what do you do? As a move action, I'm going to drop the cold iron sword and draw my magic one. Okay. And power attack. All right. You get a single attack. Plus two for prayer. Plus one. Uh, plus one. Doesn't matter. And you may be fumbled. 23 would, would be a hit. So uh, no fumble, just a miss. but just a miss. All right. You got uh, uh, five foot steps or anything like that? No. Okay. It's going to try and attack John Heil again. Uh, it does not consider you that much of a threat. Uh, oh. But it is. Uh, so claw claw bite. Just the 30? Okay. Four physical, five cold. And it is done with its attack. John Heil, you're up. This might be it. Oh, well, okay, so it is bleeding. Yeah, so it takes another nine bleed. It takes another nine bleed. So I'm going to take that off. I've got no. two bleeds on it. It takes 20 bleed, 11 and nine. Oh, it's done. Uh, yeah, after it so fights it says, you. Yeah, unless it says bleeds, specifically says every single bleed attack stacks, most of them just take the, the strongest bleed. Does it stack? Most of them don't. Yeah, but I mean, John John's a special, a special character, so. Yeah, his might. I don't really know if it stacks. I mean, Typically, it takes the toughest, the, the highest bleed. I thought all bleeds lasted until they were magically healed. Oh, they do. They do. But I, what he's saying is, if you have, if you you hit him for eleven bleed, you, you don't. 
for nine. A lot of them, since he's already got 11, it stays at 11. It doesn't, doesn't make it the 19 bleed and then 20 something bleed and then 30 something bleed. Oh, right. Okay. Unless it specifically says it. So another 11. So it's still alive. Barely. But it's, you see all this shadow stuff just swirling around and it's, it's coming discorporated and, and, and kind of flopping around. Yeah, bleed effects do not stack with each other unless they deal different kinds of damage. Two or right. more effects okay. do kind of damage. All right, so we, keep, so we keep the 11 um, until, and that's the persistent bleed. Okay. So it's still alive? It's still alive, barely. It is, it is pretty discombobulated, though. Uh, I'm going to enjoy attacking that again. Uh, unless I get a fumble. Could happen. Unless it could happen. Didn't happen. That's uh, probably going to be more than enough to kill it. It has uh, four hit points left. Yep. So with a, with a single claw, it just goes through, and it just poofs out into a big cloud of shadow and, um, and sort of slowly disappears. And we find ourselves dropping out of initiative at that point because there are no more things. So then, Lama, you still have Phineas. Phineas is saying, I want to go upstairs. I want to leave this place. John is saying, I, I, just, I just killed the, the shadow demon. Where's the other one? Nobody knows. What do you guys do? I mean, Lama, are you going to just keep on that? Beltran, what are you going to do? Well, he already beat us with a sense motive, so I believe he really wants to leave and get out of there. Yep. Um, I'm not leaving, especially after seeing that chick. Okay. So if he really wants to, I'm inclined to believe he wants to, and if he wants to, I'm not going to stop him. Plus, did she have anything on her? Did, did it look like she had books, like she found what she was looking for? Or? Uh, you mean the succubus? Yeah. So she, uh, she didn't. She wasn't carrying anything, if that's what you mean, like weapons or books or anything like that. So we need to search this place and see if, see what's been disturbed, and see if something's been taken. And if not, then we need to search it and figure out what the hell we need to know. Yeah. Um, we need to open up the, like, before we research, I want to look at the, find the whole place. I want to find this, this, uh, this chick. Okay. Lama, do you let go of Phineas? I mean, no, I'm going to pop up on my shoulder and ask Beltran, you really think he's good? Yeah, he, he did the bluff. And he's Beltran really good. the sense motive, so we both believe he's fine. I just, he wants to leave, and I'm not going to do that. I'll drop him, but I'm not letting him leave. <laughs> okay, Phineas, you, you, she lets go of your throat, you drop to the floor, and you're like, oh, thank you. Oh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Fiat, I assume you get down from the bookcase? Sure, yeah. You, well, you know what? I, actually, I want to walk along the bookcase. It's, you know, for a guy who's three and a half feet, feet tall, um, for once, it's kind, kind, kind of cool being seven feet up in the air. Um, I'm going to just walk along and look at stuff. Can I see anything um, interesting? Uh, uh, any uh, a, uh, books? A, yeah, give me a perception check. You know, uh, books or, or, or uh, uh, um, trap doors, secret things, you know? Um, yeah. 29. All right, so you walk down to the end. So you walk down to the end of this bookcase here. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Like here? Yeah, like there. So, uh, and you're looking around, and there's at the corner in an alcove is a statue, and it's again there's these statues of Caden Kalian, the guy. So you see him there, and he's like in this in this statue, he's like holding up a mug. The statue looks right. You're kind of looking at, it and you're like, wait a second. And you're as you're looking down at the statue, you can see it would be it would be hard to detect from the floor, but you can see that if you were to poke, poke its eyes, there's some sort of mechanism in there. Interesting. Okay. Like if you if you give it the mo poke, uh, there's some sort of mechanism in there. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. Uh, I kind of want to go to the eyes and uh, take out my take out my tools and poke. 
May I? Absolutely. All right. Uh, what should I roll uh, to see what I uh, I get? Uh, so you well, you can't reach it from here. You have to jump down. Okay. Uh, and okay, um, from um, do I, do I I, I I need Bjorn to give me a boost to reach? Uh, yeah, probably. Bjorn, can I have some help, please? I think I found a um a gadget inside this uh, statue's eyeball. Bjorn. Yeah, Bjorn? I'm, I'm, I'm going to collect my stuff. Gotcha. Okay. And resheathe everything, get it all, and then I'll come down here. Okay. Cool. Within my move and hoist him down off of the bookshelf. Thank okay. you. Okay. And, and hoist him up? Him, yeah, and hold him wherever he, well, it's going to be down. Hold yeah. him wherever he needs to be in front of the statue. All right, okay. Cool. And uh, can I, uh, pro can I um, try to operate this uh, eyeball. Yeah, you want to you want to just put your fingers in there, that kind of thing. Yeah, just, just, just okay. And you hear a sound. It's like like stone moving on stone hmm. from behind you. Interesting. Um, can I l look and see if, if there's a sudden um, secret door? John, give me a perception check. You don't see, so Fiat, you don't see anything around you that looks like a secret door, but John kind of turns around and goes, hey, that wall just moved. And this, so John, right here, you saw like this piece of bookcase sort of move to the side, opening up a, what looked to be some sort of entryway or some sort of, uh, some sort of hallway. Yes. All right. That was the noise. Yes. Was the thing just moved over. Good. That's All right. down there. Okay. Cool. You see there's a stone floor and another set of stairways. A st another, you can see sort of in, in the uh, thing, you see uh, stairs going down again. Okay. Before we go any further, I'm going to have everybody group up, and I'm going to burst. Okay. But thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Sure. Cool. Let's see. So John, Lama, and Fiat, I'll get 24 points. Thank you. Well, up to 24 points. Thanks. I wish I could use more of it. <laughs> I'll be All right. Right, right back. All right. So you guys, you guys go over there, John. You, you're looking down there, and you can see down this staircase, and very in the, in the sort of like um, sort of distant. You're using, uh, you're using dark vision, obviously. Yeah, you can see at the bottom of the staircase there looks to be something like I don't know some broken pieces of something. Uh, you're not sure what it is, but it looks like like rubble of some kind. Barney, you can see <laughs> Barney. <laughs> uh, you can see um, what looks to be uh, split wood or some sort of furniture, maybe. Okay. Well, There's I would a... normally suggest, yeah, go down and look at it, but since you took off, I'm going to take a walk down. All right, you're going to go down there? Yep. Okay. So as you're going down there, it has, it definitely has sort of a acrid reek to it, chemical smells. This looks to you to be the busted up remnants of a large laboratory. Um, it's a ruin though. Everything's destroyed. There's, um, you know, uh, pieces of metal and wood, split beams, busted tables, glass, broken glass everywhere. It doesn't, whatever happened here, it doesn't look like a single thing was left unbroken. That's how, that's how thorough the damage is here. Somebody got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty destroyed. Okay, I'll go back up and try to gather everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you tell? I mean, do you tell them? Yeah, I'm gonna try to get everybody to follow me down. Yeah. All right. What do you guys do? I want to go find my mommy, who's a hot chick. 
Yes. Well, Llama's blocking the door. I mean, she, even though she's uh, she's not going to let you out, certainly. So I'm going to start corralling him. Does John want me to up. follow him down the steps, or does he want me to go down the steps? Because it looks like he moved. I, don't yeah, know. I just said I want everybody to come down here. That there might be something down here. Oh, okay. I pushed Phineas in the right direction. All right. What do you do, Phineas? You follow along? You don't say no to Llama. That's true. <laughs> no, you don't. All right. Uh, so, what do you guys do when you go down there, Bjorn? You and Beltran, as you get down there, I mean, you, there's a really, there's a real stink here, um, and it's, you know, it's it's cloying. You can feel it in the back of your throat. Um, it's almost, it's almost physical. Oof. Um, so it looks like over here there's a stairway leading up yeah you go through there well yeah I mean moving into the room and on my side a stairway moving up John looks like he's found a stairway moving down as you walk through this detritus you stir up more of this gas oh, uh, until it starts to it starts to rise up from the thing as your footprint your footsteps rise it up and as you're walking through there you feel the smell just get 10 times stronger and flatfoot you begin you begin caught <laughs> <laughs> and and John and Bjorn, you guys feel like he's oh, almost choking. Give me a fortitude save, the three of you. Oh, Beltran, geez. you managed to, you, you were about ready to step into the room and you held back just in time. Uh -huh. Bjorn, you're coughing, uh, but you, and John, both of you have the cough, so you feel okay. And finally, it's like, uh, uh, you finally you like sort of spit this acrid stuff out. But uh, Flatfoot, Fiat, I need your fortitude save. A 17, just barely. You, you're standing in it, and you're like, oh, 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 and you move forward a little further to sort of get out of it. And, uh, you, I mean, you're, you're almost retching, uh, but you finally cough the last of it out, and, um, and you seem okay. Here's the problem from Beltran's point of view. Uh, you know, he just saw what happened, and you could see this sort of greenish mist coming out of the out of the piles of broken trash and stuff. These guys walked through it, and it, it was pretty. It, it, I mean, they were they they all three of them began to have coughing fits right away. So Beltran, you're not sure if you want to if you want to maybe walk through that or not. But Bjorn, you're right. You do no. see a set of stairs going upwards. Is it still close to the ground, or is it filling the uh, whole area? Well, it's filling the whole area. It's sort of rising up. You think that, that as they walk through there, they kick this cloud up. Um, it will probably fall back again. But you're, in your opinion, it's all over this material. So walking through there again would probably kick it back up. Okay. So and you're about, not sure if touching it would work. Huh? How's the ceiling? Uh, not uh, uh, about, this about the same as it is everywhere, about 13, 14 feet. So do I think if I was up the ceiling going across here, it wouldn't be, wouldn't affect me? Eh, yeah, it's not quite up there. Yeah, it's not all the way up in the ceiling, but it's just sort of billowing around. Okay. I'm going to call for Lama to come here. I'm going to push Phineas like a shovel all the okay. way. <laughs> all right. Phineas and Lama, uh, you guys go down. You get to the bottom. I'm going to cast Levitate on Lama. Oh, and then just... We're going to hang on to her as she levitates up and then can just use her hands to like push us along the ceiling over to the other side. All right, Lama, you going to, you going to, you going to put up with that after all the babysitting you've had to do now they want to levitate you around. I just want to get this damn thing done. Whatever we need to do. I'm going to drop <laughs> Phineas at his feet and then say, whatever. Okay. I'm not raging anymore. Now I'm just an irritable half work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Lama, you levitate up. Uh, you get he casts levitate on you, and you levitate up to the to the ceiling and begin sort of crawling along the ceiling above the gas. What am I? What's my goal? Right over here. What? Oh, wait, one of these is going up, and one of them's going down. Yep. The both of these stairways are going up. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. All right. 
right, right here. Hey, Bjorn. Let's do this quickly because you can levitate. I can levitate you, or you can levitate for eight minutes. So. Okay. So you want me to go up? Yeah, we're gonna. <clears throat> Phineas, did you latch onto Lama? Are you coming with us, or are you not coming? Um, I, I thought. I dropped him. Yeah, she <laughs> she gave you the choice. Uh. Well, I, I don't really have a choice. Not that you would know that. Right. So uh, maybe some dark. Oh, with, with, your, from the with your silver tongue, all I know is you got freaked out and want to leave. So right. that's not yeah. in character, but you are convincing, so I don't suspect anything. Right. So I would need direction from Les. What, what would I want to do here? Uh, you would probably want to keep up the charade. That's what I would think. So I want to go back to the temple and have beer. <laughs> no, you would want to follow follow along, like con keep con convinced that you're okay. But I because told them I wanted to go get a beer. All right, if you want to go back up there, if you think that, if you feel like that, that's the best way that you could serve your new master. Well, that's go, what I'm. Uh, why I'm seeking counsel from you. I mean, that that's that was what I was putting forward is, hey, let's go get some beer. I want beer. Let's get out of here. Let's get some beer. Uh, well, they, so. Les, what was the command she gave them specifically? To, well, she's, well, she, now she's like, defend, defend me against these guys. She wants to, she wanted him to figure out the best way to sort of, uh, you know, uh, attack you guys. Now, but when I was doing that, Lama came running in and, and attacked the succubus, at which point. She's so no really longer in danger, right? So don't I go back to normal? Nope. She's no, 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 no. She still, she dialed, she still dominates you. And this is what you, uh, what but you. She's suspect. gone, so he doesn't have to defend her because she's not here. So. She controls him in his, it, it, with a telepathic link, and she's still local enough to do that. Yeah, but dominate has, it's one command. It's basically. Uh, no, it's not. It's different. Oh, so here's a dominant person. You can control the actions of any humanoid creature through a telepathic link that you establish in the subject's mind. If you have a common language, you can generally force the subject to perform as you desire within the limits of its abilities. Uh, they have several common languages. Um, if you don't have a common language, you can say basic commands, uh, but they do. You know what the subject is experiencing, but you do not receive direct sensory input nor can it communicate with you temporarily. Once you've given a dominated creature to command, it continues to attempt to carry out that command to the exclusion of all of the activities except for necessary for day-to-day -day survival. Because of this limited range of activity, a sense motive check to, can determine that the subject's behavior is being influenced by an enchantment. Changing your orders or giving a dominant creature a new command is a move action. By concentrating fully on the spell, you can receive full sensory import. Subjects resist this control, and any subject forced to take actions against its nature receives a new saving throw with a plus two bonus. Obviously, self-destructive orders are not carried out. Once control is established, the range at which it can be exercised is unlimited as long as you and the subject are on the same plane. You are. So, I mean, her command was to protect her from against the, but she's right. gone, so... Well, but she's not gone. She still has a telepathic link with him that... But what is she telling me to do? She has to, she has to give him another command, and if, if that's no longer the case, he's got to tell him... What All right, she says, fo follow along with your friends, with your ex-friends, uh, and hinder them in any way that you think is possible. Wow. Boom. Keep them away from... Uh, and she says a name. Grazat Uth Morgith. Keep them away ah, from him. Shit. And you are given to understand that, that this you don't want them um, investigating this this um, this you want to try and stop them from investigating the this yeah. this this dungeon. So go so, get a beer is a great plan. <laughs> beer go get a beer was a great plan, but he but he can't. You guys have decided you guys don't want to do that. Right. So it was a good plan. It's not a bad plan. And he tried it. It didn't work. So he can't <laughs> hinder you guys if he leaves. Where is he? Uh, you can't see him. Phineas, you can still see, right? I'm not blind. <laughs> no, I mean, you can see the map. You can see where there. you are. Grab your guy and move yes. him where we are. Yeah. Okay. So. Come on, guys. Like like a a beer. I understand they have really good stand-up comics. All right. <laughs> so you guys are going to you guys are gonna run through that cloud? No. We got levitated over with the llama. Oh, so so Lama is basically picking you guys up and moving you over piece by piece. Right, that's, well, that's what happened last time when she first came across. About going somewhere. I mean, this 
this doesn't make any sense. I do guess... a sense. Do a sense motive check. Oh my god, I got a plus two on that. Because yeah, he is he is acting weird, so and he has been. So yeah, you you think he's acting weird? Something's wrong, and it's still wrong. This is not <laughs> this is not the Phineas you know. Free initiative at this point. I mean, are we just free? To You're out of yeah. You can just do whatever you want. Did I punch him in the face? <laughs> Ow! Whoa, you're going to you're gonna try. So Phineas has 57 hit points, so and he knows how to fight. Um, it may take more than one round I'm to knock him out. Like Lama. Exactly what a half-orc would do. Along <laughs> <laughs> with you. Bam! All right. Roll, roll to attack. Now, I'm assuming you're punching him, so it's non-lethal damage. Yeah, so that's just a slam attack. Is that right? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's a fist attack. I mean, yeah, it's a slam. So you would just, I think fists do 1d4 plus your strength bonus. <laughs> 35 hit you, Phineas? Yes. Okay, you just got sucker punched. Llama, lit, Llama lifts you over the, over the cloud of poisonous gas, drops you on the other side, and then, uh, you know, goes to get Beltran, drops him on the other side, and then sucker punches you as hard as you've ever been punched. What's the damage? Oh, hey, Les, I... I knew there was something going on. Protection from evil will block that spell as long as it's, doesn't matter about the save, it will block that spell as long as protection from evil is in effect. Yeah, but does it get rid of the spell? It gets rid of it until that spell is over. So it, it basically completely okay, so, removes. Okay, so it basically subverts. Yeah, here, I'll read it. Protection from evil or a similar spell can prevent you from exercising control or using the telepathic link while the subject is so warded, but such an effect does not automatically dispel it. So it stops control of that spell. But All it's right. Not dispelled, it's just temporarily gone. And how long was protection from evil last? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. All right. So this conversation would have taken place before. So uh, Andrew, Phineas, when, he, when you got tapped by the protection from evil spell, you felt the succubus com compulsion go away. Um, so forget all the go for a beer stuff. What would you have done at that point? I would have cast a spell on the succubus. I would have done a... Uh, well, that didn't happen until after she was gone. She was gone already. Okay. I didn't um, cast that spell until, until Lama had well, you... I would have explained what had happened, that I was under the influence of succubus. Okay. Um, I would have apologized profusely, um, and... Well, then, if that's my spell, I would know that this is just a temporary reprieve. Yep. So I tell you, she's going to have control of you again once, once the spell I hit you with wears off. And then I would tell you, then tie me up and gag me, because I'm going to use my wiles and charms against you. Okay. Yeah, you would be able to tell them that, that she's basically said to you, hinder them as much as possible, keep them away from Grazat Ur Margith. We have to finish the ritual. And I would pass that along. And okay. okay. Just, you need to do whatever you need to do to not listen to me. And okay. We will tie you up and gag you. Um, I think once we get rid of her, then this goes away. Yes. So... Well, yeah. if, if if you send if you if you kill her on this well, plane and she's some creature, yeah, she's sent back to the abyss, and that would be a different plane. And it would break the connection. Right. All right. So, where are you going to leave Phineas? I mean, are you going to carry him along with you? Yeah, just chuck him the, in the green cloud. For the first six or so minutes, we're going to let him just walk around on his own. Okay. You're not tying his legs, that means. Just ask me anything you want. Let me use my knowledge of anything. Uh, uh, let me use my magic eight ball while we can. So if you have any yes, no questions, I've got the magic eight ball, but get everything you can out of me during the reprieve. How many times can you use that eight ball? Three times a day. Or I could loan it to somebody. Um, uh, I it's just so. a ring. It's just a ring, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could, I mean, you could loan it to somebody if you wanted to. All right, Beltran, here's my ring. 
I want it back, though. <laughs> Deal. He's like, you're never getting this back, dude. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll just chuck him in the green cloud. Now I'll just chuck him. Um, so, yeah, going from there, I'd say we probably burn through half of the spell's time. Four okay. minutes to get from down from upstairs to down here and around here. Okay. So we still got four minutes left. So you got two minutes before we tie you up. Um, Bjorn, you've still got two minutes. Same thing of, of protection. Well, that's why. Do, are we going through the door yeah, I'm we, at? We, we, we need we, to go through now. While these are we, are we going right. through the door John Howe's at? What are we doing? New York. I don't have a door. I just have, I mean, I kind of went up the stairs. It just looked like a dead end. Okay. What's that little, is it a fountain was or what's the... Uh, it is, um, uh, what is that thing? Uh, yeah, it's just, it's essentially a, it's just a little like balcony that overlooks the laboratory. So it's pretty high up and the ceiling there is higher. So you go upstairs and it's basically a little overlook that looks over there. There's a, um, there's a, like a, a, what looks like some sort of urn or potential fountain there, but there's no water in it. Well, I'm going to call to my buddy Fiat. We can go back over and follow you on Fiat, I need you up here, dude. I, I'll be right there. Here. Um, what do you see? There's a door. I would like you to check it for traps and open it for me, please. Glad to. Uh, can I uh, do a perception to check for traps? Sure. Uh, let's see here. Well, I can. Can I sing Inspire Confidence? Yep. Yeah, Sweet. absolutely. For the next couple of minutes. All right. Cool. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Uh, 16 plus 19. All right. Opa Gangnam Style. <laughs> <laughs> He's possessed again. <laughs> oh, God. Not that. Right, here we go. Uh, and 26. 26. Yeah, no traps. All right. It's locked, it's though. Can I um, unlock it? Sure. Okay. For that, I use a um. I'm Same sorry. device. This gotcha. Uh, eight. But basically, less real quick. I'm just gonna say we've got 40 rounds starting. With lock. We got 40 rounds of protection from evil left. Okay. 28. It opens easily. Cool. You look inside, and you you and Bjorn see uh, an, an interesting place. So there are several sealed casks along the wall, pressed against a work desk that's fitted to sort of the corner of the room. Uh, there's a wide alcove at the far end uh, of the chamber. There's a bed that has moldering sheets on it and a, and a chest at the foot of the bed. Um, Near the bed is a crooked wardrobe uh, with some simple brown robes hanging on pegs. And on another wall hangs a map of the area uh, of, um, you know, a map of the city of, um, that you're in, this, the city of uh, Kathir. Um, there are lots of papers and stuff all tacked up and notes all tacked up all over the walls. It looks to be in that same handwriting that some of those un unauthored books in the library were. Let's see, let's see. Okay, interesting. Um, what is that right there? That's another door. I see. May I sweep this room for traps? Sure. Take a look. Cool. All right. It's going to be uh. Two secret uh, doors too. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll do uh traps first, and uh, let me see here. Uh, Actually, I guess any of us can do secret doors. Uh, for uh traps, I roll a. 26. Uh, you do not find any traps. You look around, you don't see any traps. Okay, can I uh, uh, check that door for a trap? Sure. Uh, 39. Nope, no traps on the door either. In fact, it's, it's barred from this side, so uh, you can easily open it. Okay, I unbar the door. <laughs> okay, you can open and, it up? Yes, sir, I, I do. All right, there's a set of stairs going up. Shit, wow labyrinth here okay you know uh moral of the story be be be, be careful when, when you re remove a flagstone outside the temple of yeah. sierra <laughs> hey by the way it's like 10 minutes after 11 do you guys want to oh. stop here 
Yeah, I didn't realize. Yeah. All right, you guys wander around a little bit. Phineas, uh, you know, he's coming closer, and he's like, uh, I, can, I can feel her presence again. It's coming closer. Gag me, tie me up, put me somewhere. So where are you guys going to put him? In a sack of holding. There's no air in there. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure that out next time. Okay, yeah. sounds good. You want to stop here? Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. So yeah, so Bjorn, you see that, that 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 stairway leads to what looks to be the back of another sliding panel uh, that enters into the library. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, you guys. Uh, Andrew. Yeah. Good to see, good to see you guys. Andrew, stay online for just a second, would you? Okay. All right. I'll be right back. Good night. See you guys. Bye guys. Good night. Good night. Hey Tom. Hey guys.